we are back in the Sunless Sea. Now, last time we finished off a captain. We uh, retired Helgen, Sir Madam Helgen. Royalty now. Uh, monarch of Aestival or uh, whatever the new name we gave it was. It didn't actually show up on the map, but we will see if that actually has any effects in this playthrough because we are starting out a new captain. Uh, now, I do believe we selected the rival. Um, rival and something. I think correspondent paths. So we got their iron and their mirrors. Uh-oh. Ooh, this seems bugged. Okay. Uh, yeah, this'll... Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go back. I was not quite sure that that would work, uh, that continue button. And I do believe that is bugged because of Steam auto saves. actually. Uh, I think we've seen that bug once before. But we will have an entirely new captain. We have, I believe, maximized our, uh, heirlooms with that previous captain here and here we go we're back in uh we have maximized our heirlooms with them and we had a fair amount of cash we uh we spent a bit of time grinding for that cash so we will have quite the head start uh and that's in addition to all of the knowledge that we picked up in that previous playthrough uh obviously things are going to change the map will change uh so we'll have to identify new efficient trade routes and stuff like that but port sales. Uh, we have still our hand-me-down list of the undersea economy, and I don't believe that changes. Maybe it does. Uh, maybe we will have to completely scrap that. Uh, we'll have to write down all the new trades and uh, sale prices and all that sort of thing. But let's see if we can load up the auto save. We may or may not have to go through the end. We actually quit before we did really anything with this new captain. Uh, we, we selected our inheritance, and we immediately kind of closed down the game, wanted to get everything started with this new captain in this stream. Ah, so we, uh, we do have to clear through this. This is just the ending of last time, which is fine. Uh, we'll found the nation again, and we will pick the rival, ah, the rival and pupil stats. That is what we are going for. Uh, we happened to get the Horizon Codex from, uh, I believe that is putting the Dawn Machine folks into prominence. I believe that's where we got that Horizon Codex. And the Book of Sharps, that is our re uh, reward for ending ourselves as a captain turned king for Aestival. Uh, so we actually get bon uh, bonus benefits for both of those. We can increase our iron, uh, which gets even further increased by the fact that our iron was over 100. So we're getting even more there. And uh, our pages is starting up higher, along with our mirrors from the pupil uh, inheritance here. So that's really nice. Uh, that is stellar. We do want to make sure that we take the deck gun. An aft gun, the aft gun was actually pretty good. Uh, that wasn't half bad. But honestly, I don't plan on doing too much combat. I, I'm sure I will do some combat, but we have fought a lot of the enemies there, and I think by the time we get to that point, by the time we're interested in there, uh, we will go and have the wealth to hopefully get that for ourselves, and I would prefer just a general use deck weapon to get that started off. It looks like we're starting out with about 7,000 Echo, which is stellar. Uh, I don't actually know if this is just half of the money that we're going, uh, we are going to start with, or if this actually includes the heirlooms that we passed down. Uh, that'll be something interesting. But we will have to keep that in mind. We don't get an inherited officer. That would be if we were to, uh, I believe, choose the shipmate legacy. And I uh, don't really think our hearts was all that great. Uh, not as much as mirrors, certainly. Yes, this is exactly what we want. This is the legacy we will take. We will start with a new captain here. We've got the comatose ferret back. He's still very sad. He's still 
doesn't have much to do. Um, let's go choose our past. And we'll go through all the intro. We'll read through all of the intro text right here. Captain's making. Three decades ago, in the reign of Victoria, London was stolen by bats. Now it lies half a mile, uh, no, rather it lies a mile below the surface. It was dreadfully inconvenient for everyone, but it opened a vast black ocean to you. Welcome to the Unterzee. Let's choose our past here. Decide who you were and what you want to be. Now, the last time we were a soldier, uh, the last two times, I believe, actually, uh, we were both soldiers for uh, Madam Sir Helga, sister to now King, previously Sir Madam Helgen, our father. And, th and uh, then we got the iron boost, but considering our iron is quite so high, uh, we may go for another option here, and I'm kind of feeling like having some veils is a benefit, which doesn't really make sense, uh, considering our father is the monarch of an island. Perhaps we ran away. Perhaps we didn't like it, and I think that would fit with the sort of story that I'm crafting here, uh, just because I am going for a different kind of character a different ending here possibly uh so we're going to be a street urchin that'll give us a bonus to veils uh which will be good we could also get our mirrors up if we so uh we're so inclined but i think veils is a pretty important stat to get bonused in a street urchin your urchin gang cast you out when you grew too tall you took to sea rather than graduate to larger crimes that last big score was enough to buy a ship Low cunning on the high seas. Your friend, another Longshanks, knows a little of gunnery, only a little, but she can help. And we can uh, talk to her to find out why she went to Z. Gained a bit of echo. We've gained a Longshanks gunner, and we've gained 25 bales. Now, ambition. We've already got the private kingdom. We actually managed to establish that last time. Um... I am interested in writing the Zong of the Z in this playthrough. Uh, it's going to require a little bit of grinding. Um, actually, a lot of uh, bits of grinding here. But I think since we know the undersea economy so well, we should actually be all right if we do choose that ambition. I believe that is fulfillment. Um, wealth is pretty basic. We can uh, always choose that, but that is pretty boring. Apparently, we can look for immortality as well. Interesting. Ah, and I believe this is because we have the Submariner DLC. Uh, I believe that's why we have that. I don't think we've ever had that or perhaps never seen it before. We did have Our Father's Bones for the last one, but we ended up... Discarding that ambition to go start a kingdom of our own, I think we will go for fulfillment. Gather a hundred tales, learn all you can of the Z, write a masterpiece, and retire. But we'll need to write our masterwork. And what shall we be? Captain, Captain, an irregularity with the harbor master's office. They wish to know what term of address do you prefer ashore? So... What shall we call our captain? Sir was our father. We could be citizen. Or my lord, if we, uh, if we felt like waving our nobility in the, uh, in the face of our crew and stuff. But I think... Hmm... I'm deciding between citizen and captain. Both are uh, terms that discard our background as the son of a monarch. I think citizen is too egalitarian. I think that is, uh, despite kind of uh, being one for the masses, a term for the masses, I think that is still a little too egalitarian. We will go back to captain. Captain will do perfectly well ashore as well as at sea. Thank you. We are Captain. Now time for our name. We shall be 
Telgo. An absolute unit taught in warfare by our soldier of a father, our monarch. But we have no interest in being a soldier. We wanted to be a poet. We wanted to write stories that would enthrall the senses that would dictate information to and fro. We aren't bookish, though, so let's pick a character that looks as wide as possible here. We are an absolute unit. At least that's my headcanon here. We are a gentle giant. Simply wishes to be a poet. Unfortunately, no, uh, none of these fellows, none of these portraits here actually look all of that large. Perhaps we try to hide ourselves. We were an urchin, so we could go for a uh, thieves wrapping. Or we could go a little bit more mysterious. We could go Phantom-esque, Phantom of the Opera-esque with the mask here. I'm not quite sure what this man is doing. He is uh, pointing towards his lips. He's not actually touching them in any way. Perhaps he's preparing to whistle? Could hide ourselves in a diving suit. Or we could be very crisply kept, uh, carefully maintained goatee and mustache, or simply a very lovely mustache and uh, stovepipe hat here. You know, I think... I think that I have no idea. Um, I, I think that... Identifying ourselves by this limited amount of image is very limiting. I think perhaps we will hide our identity under a thief's mask. Not the most uh, inconspicuous of disguises, but we did spend a great deal of time as a urchin, so let's go and do that. Helgo, thief, returns to the Sunless Sea. Uh, we have advice for captains. We've done this before. We know what's on, uh, going on here. Let's sell that for some extra cash. Now we are in the elegant townhouse. Ah, I see. So we still have those heirlooms. Um, we've passed them down, but we don't actually have access to their uh, financial worth unless we sell them off. And I think we will just do that straight off the bat. We will go and sell off as many heirlooms as we can just to give ourselves a little leg up on the Unterzee. Right? Should we hold on to any of these? No, these are these are worthless to us. These are worth only the money that they can sell for. Uh, so let's go sell them off. Yes, yes, it's a piece of history. How much is it worth? Gaining 986 Echo. What an odd amount. Okay. Uh, I, I kind of expected them to sell for more distinct amount. Maybe, maybe the uh, different prices come from what type of heirloom it is. A necessary measure, you've sold it for what it will fetch, perhaps even for what it's worth. But we'll keep doing that. We'll go read some morning papers uh, in our elegant townhouse, the one remaining location that we could find belonging to our father. We moved in once we got back to fallen London, once we escaped the kingdom that he had gone and settled. The Unexpurgated Gazette, the magazine formerly known as the London Magazine, spiteful trumpeter, News. News from abroad, the Conde is threatening war. They always are. London's colonies on the Carnelian coast want independence. They always do. The Unterzee, the paper's report, has undergone another alteration. Not yet it hasn't. You'd know. Well, we probably wouldn't. We haven't set off to sea yet. Oh, a promotional coupon for, uh, from Mrs. Plenty's Provisioners for Hask, 
uh, for a half cask of salt herring. You could use that. Ah, some free supply. Never going to turn that down. Let's sell off our heirlooms. Yeah, they do sell for different prices, it looks like. Uh, looks like probably a random measure. But we'll go and sell all of these off. Just to give ourselves a little leg up at the start here. And I do believe that is all of our heirlooms. Judging by the fact that we don't have any, that is. In our study... Right, we have lost all of the uh, study items, because those were our fathers. Those remained with him in his kingdom on his ship. So obviously we don't have access to them. All we have are his discards, his uh, mansion here. And... A bit of his fortune that we managed to make off with. We will probably go and try to make this. Which will require quite a bit. It does require a Dread Surmise. A uh, port report from a few key locations in the Untersee. Lots of secrets, lots of tales of terror, lots of these stories, lots of memories of distant shores. These I know we can trade for in IREM. Perhaps we will figure out a way to collect them in their own right. But of course we have lots and lots of story to get through. We have lots of characters to recruit, approach, and otherwise deal with. Let's head back out into the house, though. And uh, head back to the rest of the city, shall we? We can pick up another Blemigan Galvanter. Uh, the... Comatose Ferret is unfortunately very unhappy. Flemmigan Gallivanter doesn't do too much. There is uh, not much we can do for him, as far as I can tell, but he will bring a little bit more cheer to the ship. Let's go adopt a Flemmigan Gallivanter again. Each captain in our line has traditionally taken one, so we shall follow. The Flemmigan sits atop a splintered crate, clicking and whistling at captains as they come near. Let's go talk to him. A polite bow. You extend your hand, and the Flemmigan leaps on. Its tendrils entwined with your fingers and it chitters quietly. It meets your gaze and bobs its dome in greeting. It is very small. Is it old enough for naval service? You're pretty sure its mustache has been drawn on in pen, in an attempt to look older. As you approach your ship's gangplank, the creature flutes and vibrates with apparent happiness. The bosun winces as you bring it aboard. Ah, it's not bad. It's a lovely time. We will go throw him on instead of the comatose ferret here. He will give us a little bit more mirrors and a bit of pages, uh, which are always nice to have. Now, to London. The Admiralty is back. The Admiral has returned. So let's go visit the Admiralty's survey office. They'll pay for information from Z-Captains, find out what and how. Uh, do you need me to go anywhere in particular? Admiralty. The Admiralty's survey office. The Admiralty's picket fleets and intelligence networks are long gone. The survey office pays Z-Captains a small sum for recent information. Anything particular? Uh, well, if we can be assured of your discretion, this port. They want us to go to the Iron and Misery Co. Funging Station, not far from home waters. Speak to our agent there and return. We'll see what you're. Uh, we'll see that you are rewarded. And uh, we don't have enough Admiralty's favor to actually talk to the Admiral yet, so we'll let that pass by. The Labyrinth of Tigers is still doing Labyrinth of Tigers things. I wonder if there's more to do here. I wonder if there's more information we can get, um, or that we can garner. Perhaps. But they only sell live specimens as of now, and they uh, sell harlot fries. Or no, we can sell a harlot fry to them. If we had any inclination to. And a passenger here. The unsettled salvager to Venderbite. Okay. Um, she visits Wolfstack every day in Z-stained rags begging for passage. No captain will look her in the eye. Sure, we'll go take you aboard. Welcome to board. She embraces you. I'd kiss you, Captain, but my beloved is prone to jealousy. We were parted, but the ancient captains at Venderbite will know where she is. Okay. We have a captain, or uh, we have a passenger, rather, the unsettled salvager, to go visit Venderbite. Now, we could 
pick up and upgrade to our ship. However, I don't quite want to do that yet. Uh, I think doing a few introductory quests, getting to know the Sunless Sea, uh, at least the closer locations with our smaller ship will, in the long run, save us more fuel efficiency over time. Uh, so we'll, we'll just stick with the small ship for a little bit uh, until we start traveling further afield, and then we will go and do that. Anything more to do in Fallen London? We could pick up crew. Ah, we can offer passage to a tomb colonist. Sure, we will. We're already going to Venterbite uh, for the unsettling... Unsettled? What was that? Oh, right. And we have a deck weapon to sell. Because we uh, we actually have... A stolen one instead. Uh, it's not going to sell for much. I'm going to sell for 10 Echoes, but any Echo... Uh, any Echo is good Echo. So, go and take that. And, uh... Where, pray tell? Who, pray tell, are we sending over there? Ah! Apparently our Scion carries over. That's interesting. Yeah, a few things here. Uh... Is that an officer? No, that's simply a quest. Okay, well, uh, we are we are going to Venderbite anyway, so we will offer passage to a tomb colonist. An emigrant will pay to be taken north to Venderbite. It's oddly difficult to die in fallen London, but when a Londoner is too tatty and wretched to live, they wrap themselves in bandages and take ship for the tomb colonies. Your crew cart these ones aboard in padded coffins. They'll sleep there until the journey is done. Sure, let's do it. And, uh... No new day for us, unfortunately, so we won't be able to pull a new crewmate, uh, possibly an officer, board. Speaking of officers, let's go talk to our Longshanks gunner here. All right, Captain. What do you want me to shoot at now? So, what do you want from life? Why did you come to Z? Khan's shadow. It's like the flit at Z, right? No one to tell you what to do, what to say or do. No one to kick you downstairs just because you got a little bit tall. I'll be a faithful officer. But put me ashore at the shadow, and I won't forget you. All right, we have a long-running quest. Our first, I do believe, for the long shanks, long shanks gunner. And she wants us to bring her to Hans Shadow. So we'll go and find out where that is, hopefully. And uh, we could proposition her, but uh, we actually could successfully proposition her. No particular reason to do so. But you know, our father was a soldier and a man of iron and will. We are uh, we're a little bit more lackadaisical. We are a poet. Everybody knows that poets love seduction. So let's go proposition her right off the bat. Well, perhaps not. Maybe maybe we wait till we're at sea. But uh, we'll, we'll go we'll go take that option. We'll do that a little bit more often this time. Uh, at least until we get a. Well, I guess we don't even need a uh, a love here because we already have the scion somehow. Not quite sure how about that. I guess we have a sibling that can take up our reins if we do want to go for that. That should be all uh, us all set. We are back down to 40 hold space, but we don't have too much to carry around right now, so we are okay when it comes to that. Uh, got 10 fuel and 6 supply. We're going to have to relearn how much we need to take from here to there. Uh, we are no longer operating with our lovely crew uh, and lovely engines specifically, and uh, aft slots and auxiliary slots, all that, that increase our fuel efficiency. So I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit painful. This is going to be a learning experience for a while. But the best way to learn here is to set off for Venderbite. Oh boy, we are slow again. I forgot about this. forgot how slow you are at the start. Because uh, we are a good 4,000 power out from where we were, so this is going to take quite some time. Discovered all the new things. Everything local should keep still. 
Uh, everything should be pretty much standard. We can go stop off at the Hunter's Keep. Uh, that'll get us some free... Oh, you know what? The sisters will be back. Uh, that'll give us some supplies if we play our cards right, and it'll give us an opportunity to interact with them. Hopefully, this time we will be able to save them. That's a dream, at least. Hunters keep a quiet isle, a grand old house, still remaining, still present. A hump of dark rock swathed in mist, like a hundred other Unterzee islands. But here's a grand house, windows aglow, lawns impossibly green and lush in the false starlight raked gravel paths. You stand on the dock as the sea nudges the ship's sides. An unexpectedly warm breeze carries the faintest trace of lavender. Well, we can uh, go reconnoiter the island. Plunging cliffs, soft green lawns, a well tucked away uh, a well tucked away in the folds of the grounds. Anything else? Seas silence. Ships rarely come here. Nothing changes, even the weather. The house is at the heart of the isle. The house and the sisters. But the Admiralty may be happy to know that nothing's changed, at least. So, shall we walk in the garland, uh, gardens, or shall we present ourselves? Let's uh, let's go give ourselves a little bit of spying going on. Uh, spy on the house. This place may not be as simple as it seems. Piano music drifts across the terrace. You peer through a half-open French window into a grand parlor. Grand in size, if a little reduced in style by dust and neglect. A dark-haired, pale-skinned young woman bends earnestly over a piano keyboard. Another, fair-haired, but unmistakably her sister, sprawls on the sofa with a book. A third sits by the fireplace, staring sorrowfully into the embers. Soon, she says, and the piano music falters and stops. We'll go hungry, and then the end will come. For me, but not for you. The pianist raises her eyes from the keyboard. Hush, if we don't speak of it. She frowns. Has she seen you at the window? You withdraw. So now that we know a little bit more about what's going on, uh, we know that this place is soon to go into flame. I don't actually remember the descriptions of each uh, of each of the sisters. I do believe the third sitting by the uh, staring into the embers. That must be Phoebe, because we know that Phoebe actually disappears with the house when the house goes up in flame. Uh, we weren't able to ever save her. But I do believe that is her. Uh, Dark-haired, pale-skinned young woman bends over earnestly over a piano keyboard. I'm thinking that is Lucy. I do believe she was the uh, most bouncy of the lot. We'll say uh, she was. She was very happy-go-lucky. She was uh, kind of a free spirit. So I think that her playing the keyboard fits there, and I do forget the last one's name, but she was a little bit more serious, uh, and so that must be the one reading the book. But they do know. It seems that Phoebe, actually it seems that all of them do know what their ultimate fate is. I wonder why that is. Let's go present ourselves at the house, though. They will have heard your ship come in. Why hide? Knock and enter. A maid with smoldering topaz eyes shows you the parlor where three young women wait. A visitor, the youngest cries, the next youngest chuckles, the eldest sighs. Do excuse the indecorum, she says. Visitors are rare. You are very welcome. I am Cynthia. There we go, Cynthia, there we go. Uh, the noisy one is Phoebe, the cheerful one is Lucy. Okay, so apparently Phoebe is the youngest, um, and Lucy is the uh, the second youngest, which means Cynthia is the eldest. We are now uh, acquainted with them. So, who should we have luncheon with? We do have recent news. Unfortunately, we used our something awaits us to reconnoiter the island, I do believe, or uh, rather to spy on the sisters here, so we won't be able to share any recent news with them. We only have to have a luncheon with one of them. Let's talk with Phoebe, I suppose. Perhaps she'll let something slip. Perhaps we can read a little bit more into her flavor text. Phoebe is soft-voiced, watchful, and unpredictable. 
Here's a story. Phoebe has a story to tell of two lovers parted by water of a raven that carried messages of a fragment of the moon. She beats time on the table as she speaks as if to a song only she can hear. The effect is hypnotic. Your attention drifts out through the skylight of the dining roof to the false stars glittering in the roof of the cavern. You drift like a puffball spore. The Untersee shimmers below. Islands lie like mineral specimens on black velvet. Ships bob like wood chips between the islands. Vast spined things pulse in the depths. There is a scent like the scent before a storm. The storm came, says Phoebe quietly. Everything changed. Somewhere in there you finished the last course. The scowling maid reluctantly serves cheese and bath all over biscuits. We have a memory of distant shores. We got a bit of a supply. We lost all of our hunger. And we have Storm's attention. Phoebe is tied to the storms. And she knows what's going on here. Or so we think. Perhaps Phoebe was the one reading. But all of them know their ultimate fate, and I do want to save them this time, properly. Totally and completely. Ah, apparently, uh, we do have news, so we could see them again if we wanted to. We won't do that, because apparently there is a timer based on this, uh, based on the number of visits you have with them, I do believe somebody said. And we very much want to save them, so we want to get our stats as high as possible before we ultimately get this event. And, uh, yeah, the whole Sunless Sea is now black. We do know at least that the, uh, a few areas of this stay the same, most notably... Uh, the entire area close to Fallen London here. So let's keep setting off. We'll slowly creep our way over to Vendor Bite. I do very much want to save the sisters this time. So very much. Got a ship out here. Could take it into combat. And uh, it seems we may have to. So they have quite the advantage on us. Ooh, ow, yeah. Unfortunately for them, we have quite the gun here to take them on with. And we still do sink them in one shot. We've destroyed a pirate steam pinnace. The ship is yours. What will you do with her? Loot and scuttle her. She's a vile old vessel, and these Zs aren't safe. Take what you can and move on. Lean pickings. These pinnaces don't sail far from their hidden harbors, but there's something at the back of the hold. It is a bolt of fabric. Shake it out a little and let it glimmer in the light. Parabola linen. Parabola is the serpent placed behind mirrors. Or someone made that up. But in that case, where do they weave the sleek and ambery glimmering cloth? Always good to have. Uh, parabola linen is pretty expensive, so it's not a bad thing to get for free. Discovered Carissa's point, which means we are just at the edge of Fenderbite here. And Horniman Stag, which I believe just gave us a secret, which is always lovely. And we have found Fenderbite, our first of many locations. Ah, Songbird Misty Raiding. Hello, hello. Thank you very much for the raid. Anti-Rabbit says supplies. Yes, hopefully. Well, we've made it to the tomb colonies here. Trouble with the tomb colonists. You brought this decaying emigrant north. Now what? So. What, uh, what does she want to do here? Apparently she's not exactly who she seems. You help out an immigrant. Your tomb colonist passenger yanks off her bandages. She looks remarkably healthy for a tomb colonist. I'm not as dead as I look, she confesses, and I won't get ashore without your help. Yes, the constables are looking for me back home. Is that a problem? That is not a problem at all. Gotta go see you later. Yes, thanks for joining. Misty could not stay, but sends well wishes by Proxima. Yes, thank you very... Uh, she, she is well appreciated for the raid. But I think we will go help out this tomb colonist here. We'll go help it out again. Uh, muffled oars. You slipped the furtive, uh, your furtive passenger past the skin check post and confirmation of consolation. 
Thanks, Captain, she remarks casually. Let me teach you a couple of tricks, and just in case you do this again. And here's a little hush money. Gained a little bit of veils, always nice. Uh, gained 200 echo, which is pretty sweet. Uh, we got a bit of a suspicion, unfortunately, but we lost the tomb colonist, which is totally fine. Hate the colonists? No, the colonists are all right. They're, uh, they're from all walks of life, but they're just enjoying their twilight years for however long their twilight years last. It kind of just stretches on to infinity here, so not quite sure, but the tomb colony of Venderbite. On deck, you can hear the sound a thousand bandaged dead make as they shuffle and cough. It's something like the world's most restless concert audience or the world's most plague-ridden cathedral. Ah, and we can find ancient captains to speak to the unsettled salvager here. Shouldn't be too hard. What else have they got to do around here but molder? Terrible bad luck. An assortment of decrepit Z captains gathers around her, compelled by tradition, honor, or boredom. She picks her nails and closes her eyes when at last she speaks. I want to find Lady Black. Oh boy. We know, we know exactly who that is. Oh boy. The captains that can run do. The rest shuffle away as swiftly as they're able. Only one remains behind. How long were you down there, he ask, uh, asks. Twenty minutes, she replies. The captain puts his hand on her shoulder. Seek the house of the keel in Polythreme, he says. If you, but if you can forget her, do. It's possible. He embraces her and departs. And now we know the unsettled salvager is bound for Polythreme. And we know exactly what it is she wants. Lady in Black, for those not in the know, is some sort of being. Uh, perhaps a god, perhaps just a presence that exists in the deeps. Uh, and we have seen her once before, I believe. Uh, we went into an abyss and saw a cathedral with a uh, I believe a procession of people, things, um, bringing in something to uh, to that cathedral. And I do believe that is tied to the Lady in Black. We've also seen her effects in the Sunless Sea uh, just under the waves. I can't quite remember what the uh, effects of her little uh, cloud underwater was, but it is certainly spooky and obviously... Uh, a being that haunts the deepest areas of the ocean is not going to be well thought of by captains, uh, by Z captains here. That said, the unsettled salvager wishes to meet her again. Apparently, she has spent time down in the in the the abyss in the depths, but she wishes to return, perhaps to stay, perhaps simply to see her. Either way, we are bound for Polythreme. We can go and grab a port report, gather gossip who's plotting what out in the tomb colonies, probably not much. Along the coasts of the Untersee, it's remarkably hard to die. The decrepit and nearly dead who leave London become tomb colonists and settle here in bandaged peace. But they don't give up their ties to home or their politics. You gather a hall of complex clues, enough to keep your contacts in London interested. We have a port report. I suppose we may as well visit the first curator, just in case he, uh... He wants to give us a quest, and we know he does. Uh, we know he wants us to collect his colors for him. Uh, and we know a few of the colors. We did manage to get that completed. Uh, but we... Do have to get all of those again. I can't even recall what I submitted for a lot of those colors. So, hopefully we'll be able to find them all again. Let's visit the first curator. Z captains, the first curator gives audience. First curator is responsible for the preservation of the tomb colonies. It has been here much longer than London, and like uh, like all the oldest tomb colonists, but even tomb colonists dissolve in the end. Its time is close. The first curator's manse. No more light, the obsequious steward cautions you. The curator is terribly afraid of moths. He opens the door and you step into near darkness. A pair of luminous lamplighter bees buzz in a latticed ivory tube. There is no other source of light. A bandaged shape, no larger than a child, lies crumpled on a couch. It lifts its head with obvious effort. It takes several seconds for you to distinguish its voice from the soft buzz of the bees. Let's listen to the whispered 
request. We know exactly what he will request, though. Z Captain, Silkskin, not much left of me. I will go into the Grand Sanatorium. Bring me colors. Seven colors. A hey. well. Seven colors. Cosmic uh, Cosmogon, Irigo, Pelagon. Stewart has list. Find them here and there, across the wide black Z. We shall. Let's ask about the, the uh, Grand Sanatorium, though. I can't quite remember what that is. I do believe that is where they go to end. One hears the name whispered here and there in the arcades of Venderbite. Arcades, eh? I'm sure that means something different uh, in the uh, Victorian London sense, but still interesting. A long, low chuckling. Oh, Silkskin, you don't want to know. The chuckling becomes a cough. Uh, d we don't die here below. Not unless we go to Z, so we needed something else. Somewhere to end. Well, let's go accept that commission here. Thank you. This poor flesh thirsts for colors. No more words. It collapses, rustling back onto the couch. Even the effort of speaking seems to have diminished it a little. The audience is over. As the door opens, it shrinks from the finger of light that reaches across the floor. Outside, the obsequious steward nods. The book? Yes, the book. He hands you a slim, illustrated volume. The curator is old. Old as dust. But we will all be grateful if you do it this one last favor. We have every single color now to collect. Uh, if we go check that out, actually. No more flavor text. The Neath Bow, a book for children. One page is devoted to each of the colors of the Neath, which are not found on the surface. So we have all of the colors all listed out for us. Uh, we know that Gant can be found, obviously, in the Gant Pole. Uh, I believe we got a star shell to take that one off. Apossian, uh, the blue, oh, I can't quite remember what it was. I think it was blue scintillic is an option there. We also actually got the Apossian chess piece, uh, so if we want to do that, we can. Next up, we have Cosmogon, the color of remembered sons of Kund, the voted fungal. These flourish in the glow of Cosmogon. Can't quite remember what we turned in for that. It may have been something from the Utter Shroom. Perhaps it was. Gant, we know. Uh, Irigo. No one remembers why. Irigo colors the forgotten corners of home. I think there were a few that ticked that box off. I think we got that one kind of unknowingly. We'll get it. Uh, Pelagon, the color of the deepest Z. I'm not really not sure what we'll turn in from there either. Someone has scrawled in the margin beyond the gate. There is a sea more sunless. That, I think, is referring to the north. Because uh, we do know there is a gate in the north. A massive gate we've never managed to go through. Uh, Mr. Sax actually gave us a quest to go and get a sacrifice for that. But we didn't end up doing it in time. Uh, we, we didn't end up, rather, uh, getting a sufficient option for him. So, but that's that. Um... Violent, V marks violent when blood is shed in a spired place. Violent ink is treated, employed for the most desperate treaties. We got that from the Empire of Hands. And last but not least, Viric, the color of shallow sleep. I do believe we got that from uh, the unsettling, uh, no, 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 the uh, tireless mechanic. We got that from his dreams, I do believe. But we have a quest for that. We'll go and find all of the first curator's colors, hopefully, eventually. And uh, since we have a something awaits us, here, they favor candlelight over gaslight. The shadows are swagged with cobwebs. Tomb colonists stand still enough to be mistaken for sculpture until they laugh or cough. One building in three seems abandoned. Let's go explore the lovely area of Venderbite here. A raggedy fellow. Captain, I'm a good Zeman. I'm yours if you'll have me. Will you have me? I'm hungry. I'll work hard. He seems likely enough, if a little ragged and sor uh, sorrowful. We are... Hmm. Plentiful on Zaylers. Sending him home is a expensive option, uh, especially for our current finances. I know we have a lot right now, but we will uh, I'm sure we will spend quite a bit now that we don't have that lovely, lovely engine. I think we'll just take him with us. Even though it will cost us extra food, I think we should be okay. Let's take him with you. You could use an extra hand. Taking a chance, you won't be sorry. I'll work double watches. Ask anyone, they'll tell you I have a good name. Yes, yes, eventually you get him to stop talking. His enthusiasm is promising, if a little pitiable. 
Ah, and he's come back to us as an issue. A skilled crewman. Here's the Zaylor who came begging to you for birth. He's done good work, this one, but he's keeping a little shrine to salt. The nameless god of the horizon at the back of the hole. Permitted. Out here, a captain uh, needs all the help he can get, even from the sad, strange gods of farewells. Or we can forbid it. Uh, I, I agree with that permitted statement. I think having any help, what any help whatsoever, is probably a good idea. So let's uh, go and select that option. A breath of air. You let him keep his, little, uh, his sar salt circle and his chalked arrow. That night, as you stand on the foredeck, a soft breeze comes out of the east, the salt's direction, tussles your hair, and passes. We have salt's attention from the god of the Z. And uh, I think that is everything here. Now, that tomb colonist, right, we uh, we determined that she was on the run from uh, folks in Fallen London. That gave us a little bit of suspicion there, but we don't really have anything that would increase that issue. Uh, I'm just going to double check our undersea economy, make sure that everything stays the same. If it changes, we are going to have to do a lot of rewriting here. Uh, but that will be way back. I think this is the first location that we actually started keeping track of the undersea economy. Uh, tomb colonists sell for 15. Did we not actually write that down? Huh. I guess not. Okay. Well, apparently our, uh, undersea economy is not complete. I think most of it, for the most part, is. But, uh, some of it is not. Tomb colonist sells for 15 echo. What about the rest of it? Do we have everything in the arcade of size here? Cask of mushroom wine sells for 23 echo. Yep. 33 for foxfire candles. Fuel bought at 20 and sold at 2. We do not have these. Ah, but we don't have... Hold on a moment. We have very little. Our undersea economy is not complete at all. What? How, how dare we call ourselves charters of the undersea? If we cannot even chart correctly. Fuel. Bought at 20 echo and sold at 2. And supplies. Bought at 30 and sold at 8. Just about standard for outside Fallen London prices. Uh, I, I really don't know why we didn't have that listed down. I guess we were just a little bit la uh, lazy at documentation in the beginning. But that is an exception, uh, exceptionally high price to go and pay for fuel, so we obviously won't get any here. Uh, supplies are doing totally fine, even if we will eat through them a little faster with our new crew. Uh, and I don't think... We have enough crew to, or uh, have enough fuel rather, to go up to Wither and Codex, which should just be up here. I think instead we will take a wide route down to Fallen London. Right? Yes, yes, I think we shall. I do believe out here this is Tanachuk? Yes, Tanachuk. Uh,. Amazingly, that little spiraling column of bubbles means nothing. We've been under the water, and I am so surprised that it actually does mean nothing. Uh, very, very surprised. Ah, and there's a crab. Don't mind if I do. Unfortunately, this Aurora Megalops will be hunted down too slowly for us to benefit from its hunger. So we will just take it for the fragments it can provide. We will go dissect it. And our pages check is pretty good. The Megalops defeated. With a forlorn and wailing cry, the Megalops turns on its back, legs neatly folded as bluish blood gouts from its wounds. Its golden glow begins to dim. Let's go dissect it for some knowledge. A crab full of conundrums. You set to work with your knives and acids. It is a most uh, it is an undistinguished adolescent specimen. A Megalops of one of the deep Z crab species, but its eyes, normally vestigial in these troglodytic beasts, are large and rather beautiful. The golden glow is almost gone now, though sparks leap now and then to your knife and a few fragments. And uh, if I do recognize these rocks correctly, this means that Guider's Morn is right off of here. The 
Reborn, Vetus Pillar. I do believe this is Guider's Morn. Perhaps I could be wrong. Oh, the ship? Ooh, a Corsair as well. Uh, doesn't seem to have noticed us, though. My goodness, did I ever take travel speed for granted with our uh, our last captain. Yep, Guider's Morn. I really love to get to some of these exterior islands. There's so much mystery going on there. Why are there pipes? What are they pumping? Ah, it's fancy. But we'll make it here. We'll go check that our charts are correct for the undersea economy. And we've made it to Guider's Morn. Now, we can uh, overhear rumors of Pirate Poet. We have, with our previous count, uh, captain, had many an encounter with her. Let's read through Guider's Morn. Of course, this is a new playthrough. This is a new captain. We need to give him all the information. The Morn is a stalagmite, vast as a crag. Its foot has no safe harbors. The Corsair's Citadel nestles halfway up. An intricate system of winches take her uh, take the strain, and your ship rises slowly from the Z. Her hull uh, creaks in protest. Grizzled sailors groan and cling to stanchions. Higher, higher. Now the Unter Z shimmers like glass below. Children clambering in crevices cheer and wave alarmingly. The winch motor slows, and you hang in a cradle next to a red bowed pirate cutter. So what shall we do here? We can, of course, listen to the rumors of the pirate poet. Land lovers fear pirates. Pirates fear the poet. Lies, nonsense, glimmers. Some say she's a, she's a clay man who freed herself with the power of verse. Possible. Others insist she's the personal muse of the king with a hundred hearts. Unlikely. One claims she sails on a living ship made of some, uh, made of the still screaming skulls of her victims. More sober voices mutter that no, it's just an Alcius class vessel. Whatever the truths, few have fought her and survived to tell the tale. Only the bravest of captains risk the lonely parts of the sea, uh, the sea where her flag is set to fly. We know that she uh, she is a clay man. She is a uh, unbound clay man, I believe it is. It is just an Alcaeus class vessel. It is just the I keep saying corsairs. I think it's actually something else. Um, anytime you uh, sink one, you get a chance encounter with her. But we'll let her go. And uh, what else shall we do here? Gathering intelligence is only a 61% chance, and I don't want to risk... Well, you know, I do actually have a few crew here. I've got quite a few crew. And we do need a port report. Sure, let's go try it. Gather intelligence. Guiders mourn swarms with pirates, smugglers, and captains of uncertain allegiance. You could learn a lot here, but you'll need to go carefully. Scarecrow, Scarecrow. You're eavesdropping on the captain of a lean black cutter when her first mate spots you. In the ensuing fracas, one of your crew is smashed through a flimsy wooden wall. He falls 200 feet to be impaled on a smaller stalagmite in the shadow of the morn and dies instantly. It's a painless death, but his slowly mummifying corpse will hang there for decades to come. Ships will salute it. Successive generations of children will name it, rename it. Flinkstones dare each other to climb the pinnacle and kiss its fleshless hand. Oh, well. Failure. We lost a bit of crew. We gained some terror. And we... Oh, we did still get the port report. Okay. Uh, but we now have a tale of terror as well. Okay, not too bad. Um, and amazingly, that did not use our something awaits us here. So we could still have a drink, which we probably won't. I think instead we will explore the Morn. There's a surprising quantity of actual landscape on the Morn. It's vertical, admittedly, but once you can find the beast paths and urchin roads, you can traverse it as you would a rocky moor with an additional throat full of lurching terror. An intriguing smell. Who will try, who will buy? A street vendor turns skewers on a grill. The mixed scents are nothing like anything sold in London. We can try the tr uh, grilled troglodytic prawns. Huge and pale, their eyes stare bleakly into yours, but they smell fresh. Uh, the shredded jellyfish. Something mysterious. Or uh, if we were so inclined, we could uh, try some more robust meat. Go big or go home? Uh, we have very few hearts here. Uh... <laughs> We've got, at best, a 30% chance here. And our hunger is pretty high. Do it? Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll not go all the way down. We'll not go to the tyrant's tree here. But we will go for the shredded jellyfish at the very least. 
not to everyone's taste. Jellyfish, the food of queens. Traces of its venom still remain just enough to make your tongue tingle and alter your consciousness a little, uh, a touch. Your pulse accelerates and odd thoughts sparkle in the forefront of your mind. All the way, boo. Ah, it's, it's, it's the uh, brave but not insane option, is what I'll say. We gained a bit of fragment. We lost a, uh, lost a bit of terror. We did succeed that time. See, look at that. Success. That, was, that, that is a positive result from a calculated risk. And we've also lost five hunger. Not too bad. But that'll be everything here. Uh, Guider's Morn. We'll go check the economy pages here. 26, 23, 30. Yeah, so everything looks pretty much the same. I didn't really expect too much uh, difference from most of these. So we did manage to get everything here. Uh, the undersea economy is still trustworthy. So we won't have to spend any more time writing that down. Hopefully. Hopefully. That is all of our time at Guider's Morn. There's nothing else to do here. Uh, end of submarine is tutorial until we get the submarine. Uh, we'll just stay there. But we know that is right by Fallen London, so, uh, or right across from Vendorbite, rather. So we'll see how that serves us in future. I think we just sail kind of straight down so we can clear out some of this blackened sea. Uh, we do only have five fuel remaining, and I don't actually know if that'll be enough. Hopefully it will. Uh, but we will sail with our lights off as we sail on the lights here, just to save on fuel costs. We are at the very least burning less fuel, as far as I can tell. Uh, I think maybe the amount of fuel we burn is equivalent between what we are uh, using and the distance we are traveling. I think that is approximately equivalent. Oh god. Right, one of those guys. Uh, we need to get out of here. Uh, quick like. Has he, has he lost interest in us? I think he has. Oh, perhaps not. We can no longer take those on. We no longer have nearly that much hull. Cracked pirate frigate. Hopefully he's lost us here. Okay. He chose perhaps the wrong side of the rock? No. No, he didn't. Oh, and he sent out a... Ow. A torpedo. We don't have that much health to play with here. Uh, we gotta we gotta get out. Can he still hit us from here? No way. Certainly not. We are way out here. This is, unfortunately, how we're full speed. But I think we should be okay. All right. We'll uh, go turn this on. Take care of this bat swarm, hopefully before they hit us. Maybe we should pick up that new ship, uh, just so we don't have to worry quite so much about hull. Bat swarm defeated. Leathery little corpses lie across your deck. The rest of the swarm vanishes into the neathy dark. Gather up the corpses there, succulent with stolen blood, into the pot, or we can dispose of them. Their mere touch leaves you shuddering. Ah, I think I think the supplies are more important. An or unorthodox diet. Those little bones are troublesome, and the flesh a little gamey, but salt them well enough, and they're quite edible. A little bit of terror, but some supply as well. And that is important to us. How's the new captain? What's the backstory? So we are trying to make a name for ourselves. We are trying to write a masterpiece. Uh, we are Helgo, uh, son and heir of Helgen, monarch of Aestival. Though that may not be the case. I actually don't know if that'll change anything in this playthrough. I don't know if Aestival will be colonized or anything. Super interested to see. Uh, though that is, assuming it is in the same location, a long ways from here. That'll be uh, quite the ways out. Our new ship is kind of slow. We have determined that our passenger of choice, uh, the unsettled salvager here, wishes to talk to Lady Black, the, uh, the lady who haunts the abysses and deep places of the Sunless Sea underwater. So we've got to go to Polythreme for her, and our Longshanks gunner, our urchin acquaintance, our gunner, uh, gunnery officer, wants to go to Con Shadow, apparently. So uh, we'll go and see if we can get her placed as well. The Revenue Men, unfortunately, have stopped us because we are suspicious now. Her Enduring Majesty's Customs Service, Customs Service, rather, uh, works closely with both the Ministry of Public Decency and the Masters of the Bazaar. Today, they have selected you for an, an inspection. Wow, I can't talk today. Today, they have selected you for an inspection. There we go. Don't cheek them. 
Well, let them do their worst. We have nothing. We have nothing of interest on us. We have nothing to hide. So reduce your suspicion if your suspicion is five or more. I'm amazed if we managed to uh, get that much suspicion. I guess if we were doing illicit uh, goods, maybe we would get up there. Vexed and frustrated, they roam your decks like wolves. They tear through your belongings like termites, and at last, they leave. But unfortunately, our suspicion has not gone down. What suspicion did you get already? It turns out that the uh, tomb colonist that we picked up for transport over to uh, Venderbite was actually a SKP from London who was being hunted, so we did get a little bit of suspicion from that. But we have returned to London. The lights of London welcome you home. Let's collect messages from the Harbor Master. All the clatter and song of the dockside, it soothes the soul. Are there messages for you? Something has changed underneath. Someone wants to sign on? Okay. Not too much. So, uh, it looks like the bruiser wants to talk to us. Ah, consider a specialist surgeon. So she is staying at a respectable boarding house near the docks and has made it known that she is available for work. Well, she's got quite the quest. We did pick her up last time. We may as well pick her up this time. Just because we uh, pick them up don't, doesn't necessarily mean, need, mean, my goodness, we need to finish their quests. Uh, and she does have quite the payoff at the end of it. Let's pick her up. She's staying at a respectable boarding house near the docks and has made it known she is available for work. I specialize in amputations. It's easy to acquire unwanted appendages at Z. Let's employ the clatterier. Her talents could be well employed on your vessel. Vessel. Uh, she's a doctor who increases hearts and iron. I mean, didn't you get all of the officers before? Yeah, she'll be. At least she'll be a boost to stats. Uh, we didn't actually get all the officers before. Apparently, it is a random chance what officers actually appear uh, in your playthroughs, uh, with officers and characters and all that sort of thing. So uh, maybe we'll get different officers this time. Maybe. But we will go pick her up for 30 Echo. Uh, always need a doctor. Welcome aboard. She comes with a bag full of knives and her own personal sharpening stone. Don't touch these. Don't let anyone else touch them. No more recruits. Uh, unless we go to London. Perhaps? Oh no, I see. Okay, so she uh, she, take, she took up that spot. That's alright. Um, let's go visit the Admiralty first. They'll pay for information from Z-Captains, find out what and how. Well, we know what and how. We have port reports. We have one for Guider's Morn. You have something to tell us about the pirate fleets of the forest. You know, considering they are barely northeast, yeah, northeast of you guys, uh, I'm surprised you haven't cracked down on them a little further. But we will go submit it. Uh, submit that. We will get 30 Echo, a favor, since it is a new location, and a bit of fuel, which is always lovely to get for free. Next up, Hunter's Keep. I trust the sisters are keeping well. They are citizens of her enduring majesty, notionally. We'll go submit that. Gain a little bit of Echo, another favor, since it is a new location, and a li little bit more fuel. Vendor Bite, last one we have visited. What, a, uh, what have the nearly dead been up to yet? Uh, then, rather. And another 10 Echo, a little bit of fuel, and some more Admiralty's Favor, and actually enough Admiralty's Favor that we can speak to the uh, Dark Spectacled Admiral here. Do you have an appointment? No appointment, but, hmm, apparently I'm to show you in anyway. Very well. The Dark Spectacled Admiral. You're ushered into his office off Mansion's Pyre, a cramped room with a vast desk. He surveys you across that desk. Ah, yes, the merchant captain of whom we hear such complicated things. So, we could ask him for some subsistence uh, assistance here. We could give vital intelligence if we were to have it. We've already turned in our port reports. But instead, I think we'll ask him what he needs. Discover the Admiral's desires. Information. Visit a port and we'll be interested in the port report. Visit places of particular interest and we'll be interested in the strategic information you gain thereby. We will pay you well, don't worry. We understand you can't be expected to act entirely for the love of the Emperor. Uh, Empire, rather. His lip curls. What's left of it? Oh, right. And we already had... Ah, shoot. We actually already had a... Quest from the Admiralty. Can we see what request in the journal that is for? Uh, I entirely forgot to write down. Here it is. All right, the Iron and Misery Co. Funching Station. 
So we'll just have that uh, off of the margins here. Sticking with the starter ship. I'm debating it. Um, I do believe it consumes less in the long term. As long as we're traveling close afield, I think it probably wouldn't be that bad an idea. We do have the Echo to get a new ship here. But that will also result in more costs in the immediate term. So I think we might hold on to the starter ship for a little while, just long enough for the, us to uh, expand probably around the part of this on the sea that is not actually uh, not, not changeable. So maybe that's a bad option. Considering how much damage we've taken, uh, how slow we move, perhaps that's a poor option. Hmm. I suppose we can't spend these echoes if we're dead, so there's no use hanging on to them in that case. Uh, let's go check out the shipyard, I guess. So we've got the Cocodrio. Uh, is this... Yeah, that must be the same one that we had from last time. I guess we never mentally noted the name. Uh, this tramp steamer has see, uh, served well, but for a long, long time. I suppose we have just robbed our father's residence here. We may as well spend some of that, Echo. Uh, could pick up a uh, lamphead class cutter. A little bit faster, I do believe. Uh, so hold capacity slightly smaller. A weight that is significantly uh, lighter. That we would travel faster. A much smaller crew quarters, actually. Wow, that is immensely tiny. And a little bit less hull, along with a negative bonus to iron. Uh, but we do trade that off for a mirror's bonus and a veil's bonus. Probably not that, though. Uh, we are worried currently about our health, so it'd probably be better to pick up something better. Um... Perhaps we should go straight for the Merchant Cruiser. Now that is a hefty, hefty ship. Uh, weight of 5,000 here. And I think that actually is heavier than all but the Dreadnought. Which means we would have to get engines to boot, and that would result in... Uh, increased fuel costs and expenditures. Cruiser feels painful without a better engine. However, yeah, that's true. We could buy a better engine. That would result in quite the financial expenditure right up front. I think we'll probably get a middle ground. Maybe? Hmm. I do wish there was something between the Corvette and the Cruiser. Uh, just something that was a little bit more reasonable for them. Because I do like the hull capacity, or uh, the hull, rather, the health of the cruiser, because it would make it feel a little bit better, and the hold capacity, but that weight is really going to drag us down. And the quarters just feeding all those people is going to have an issue instead. Uh, just buy the dining room uh, dining room table instead? Yeah, no, that is, uh, that is a sure trip to death right there, the Stymphalos class. With exactly one hit point and five hold capacity, that is awful. That is a that is a non-starter right there. I think. Hmm. I think we'll go for the Corvette. It's not that much heavier. It's a little bit heavier, so it's not that much slower, hopefully. So we, if we really need to, we can buy a small engine upgrade. It gives us quite a bit more hull. Uh, it basically doubles our hull, even if it doesn't increase the hold capacity, which is a bit of a shame. It is only ultimately 3,000 Echoes uh, once our trade-in goes through. Ah, and you're right, it does have a forward weapon, uh, if we wanted to do a little bit of combat that way. We've actually never had a ship with a forward weapon before. That's true. Um, but this should still give us... Uh, quarters of 15 should only mean we have travel with, uh, what, 8 or 9? To go full speed? 
uh, at, at the fast minimum, and it gives us a little bit of an iron bonus. So I think that's probably a better option. Uh, and that'll still leave us with enough Echo to eventually go to the Caligo class Merchant Cruiser when I do uh, believe that we have enough control of the Sunless Sea map so we can start playing the economy a little bit. Uh, at present, the economy is a little rough. Uh, I think with our current engine speed and whatnot, it'll take more fuel and supply uh, to get places and we will make profit off of it. Let's go switch it out for the Forced class Corvette. Small, swift, and formidable like a very angry vole. Let's do it. Oh, and we can name our ship. What should we name it? Um, oh, man. I don't think we've ever named a ship. Uh, we've never we never actually bought a ship here. Uh, the Unsinkable 2? No, God, no. That would just tempt fate. That would be a terrible, uh, terrible option. Um... Hmm. Jim? <laughs> I do. I do like that name. Uh, never given. Let's call it a... Uh... Oh, man. I mean, what, what, what am I going to use it for? I'm using this to uh, explore, mostly. Like that one that got stuck in the canal. Oh, oh, I see what you're talking about, right? The ever given uh, from, from that whole debacle in the... What was that? The Panama Canal, right? Unfortunately, I don't want my stip, uh, ship to get stuck, because unlike that ship, we do take damage when we bounce off things. Let me, th let me think of what I am using it for. We are using it for... Exploration. Uh, square peg? Yeah, that's okay. But since we're using it for exploration... Uh, It is temporary. You know what? I'm going to call it the paper crane because we are using it for ex uh, exploration. Cranes do fly and they uh, presumably observe things. I don't know. But the fact that it's a paper crane gives them the, uh, the idea that it is a temporary sort of thing. Paper cranes probably won't last very long. I think that's a decent name. That, that makes sense to me in my head. My other ship is a dreadnought. No, that's the bumper sticker. Uh, that's the bumper sticker. We will stick on it. But I think the paper crane is a decent one. We want to throw that through. Forced class Corvette. The paper, uh, paper crane. Now, we may need to pick up some more crew here. Uh, oh, and we will be receiving a little gift. A very fine evening to you, Captain. Very fine evening to you, Captain. My, what you may call mentor, is very fond of adventurous Z captains, and he would like to offer you what you might call a dispensation on account of he is so fond of Z captains. Behind the blind bruiser on the dock stands a dray piled high with uh, fuel and supplies. Uh, we can accept the dispensation. We can inquire further, or we can refuse. I would like to inquire further. Who is this patron, and is there a catch? An airy wave. He runs a very fine and very liberal establishment just across the river, what is much patronized by sailors and by men of wit and vinegar, and, and, and public house. There is no obligation to speak of. My patron would hope only that you might remember him kindly, and I suppose that if the opportunity should arise for you to return his kindness, then I do not imagine he would refuse your offer. Sure, I think we'll pick it up then. Uh, no, no strings attached. Accept the dispensation. Do you make sure? Uh, do make sure you have fifteen points of space in the hold, or come back later. It would be embarrassing to have to leave it on the dock. Do we have that? We do. So let's accept it. A courteous nod. Well, my patron hopes that you find these little gifts to your liking, and he expects that perhaps someday you might choose to call on him at the Medusa's head. Should that day come, we will make you very welcome and give you any safe conduct, what you might require. Good evening to you. He salutes and is gone. Ten fuel. Awesome. And five supply, even more awesome. And uh, <laughs> a little bit more suspicion. I'm, I'm somehow seeing how we can gain f up to five suspicion now. Uh, C Senor. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic ship name. That would, that would, be, a, that would be a yacht. That would be the uh, pleasure yacht that I would get. <laughs> Ahoy, Zaylor. Hey, what's up? Thank you very much for that raid, by the way. 
Um, but we will go and put that on here. Uh, do you think we should probably upgrade our engine no matter what? Uh, we currently have this elderly steeple engine. Um, next step up, not too expensive, is the Leadbeater and Stainrod Illyrian, uh, which just gives us 200 more engine power. Probably not worth it. The Bo uh, Boadicea. That is not too bad. More power, less subtlety. Best lead beater and stain uh, stain rod. Oh no, I see that's a company. The best lead beater and stain rod can supply. Although as usual, they've skimped on materials. That would give us uh, about double the current speed, and we are a fast fellow. We could go straight to the Manticore number four models one through uh, models number one through number three are not discussed in polite company. But this is a powerful and effective device. That is two thousand echo. Or we could go straight to the top. Or 2,500, which is unfortunately double that at 4,000. Uh, I think that would be a bad option. Doubling it here uh, also only increases it by 500. But that is only double the previous. Double to here. That is four times for only 1,000 more. So I think the uh, Manticore. If we're doing, if we're doing a, a cost analysis chart, right? An increase from here to here, completely worthless. You're spending 500 Echo on 200 Engine Power. That's not a very good deal at all. From here to here, uh, not too bad. You're about doubling it for 1,000 Echo, which isn't terrible. Uh, but it's also kind of a middle-of-the-road solution. Here to here, over double for 2,000. I think the Manticore number 4 is probably what we're going to go for here. Let's go buy that for 2,000 Echoes. And uh, throw that aboard our engine slot. And we'll go sell that uh, very unpleasant elderly steeple engine for 10 bucks, basically. Not a great engine, that. That'll be that. The Roser's Wharf is open. Uh, Honey Addled Detective is collecting watchful curios. And long boxes go to the Jovial Contrarian, neither of which we have yet. Both of which we do know how to get though we do not currently know of the locations nor where they are. We'll keep that in mind, though. Probably won't get it for a while. The Admiral already has our mission to go to the Iron and Misery Co. Funging Station. We've already turned in all of our port reports. Could spend some time in our lodging to rest. We do have Terror of Twelve. Isn't so great. We won't sell the townhouse, of course. Uh, definitely not. as we can go into London. Right, we've already recruited our lovely doctor, who we should put in the surgeon's slot here. That She'll increase our hearts by a little bit, and our iron... Oh no, hold on a minute. She increases our hearts by a fair bit, and our iron by an equally fair bit. Not too shabby. And we have a doctor aboard, which is always nice. But let's go into London and visit the university here. University has an inexhaustible appetite for secrets, Z specimens, and other tidbits of esoteric lore. Provide a secret Prove yourself worthy of entry. Ah, and we've apparently already got two secrets, which isn't half bad. Quite impressed. Oh yes, the university's maritime liaison whispers breathily. Oh yes, this is quite a tasty one. Let me explain it to you. She, or he, explains. Teeth glinting. And we know who this is. We've gained some pages for that. We've lost a secret, though. And we are now an antiquarian. It's the alarming scholar, who is uh, returned quite well from being insane. Um... Yes, that may have been our fault, uh, our father's fault, rather. But she or he seems quite the better. The alarming scholar is mercurial, to say the least. A creature of sudden moods and provoking teeth. Possibly her, is it her, appointment to the university as, uh, as university maritime liaison, rather, was precautionary to keep his, is it his, Razor sharp enthusiasm for causing too many injuries in this faculty. Yes, the scholar whispers breathily. I have a budget for acquisitions. What have you brought me? Uh, nothing, because I would like to hold on to my memory of distant shores, please. There's a piquant piece of picaresque, picaresque pilgrimage, and it is all mine. Thank you very much. But we shall. I'm, I'm sure we shall come back to you, uh, should we need it. We could go into lodgings. 
I don't know, but we never used our our recent news up, so we'll go and leave that to a later date. I guess we just have to explore further then. Uh, let's head south. Let's head south. We know that the Iron Republic should still be there, hopefully. Um, perhaps we'll pick somebody up there. Perhaps there will be an officer. And we do want to expand our map. This will also be a lovely test to see our new ship uh, with its new engine in movement. And uh, we can sell this bale of parabola linen. We're just going to use it for cash for now. Uh, we don't really need to keep that on board, keep that filling up our hold space. Go and sell it for 60 Echo. Not the best price, but the best price is probably a distant ways from here, assuming the map is approximately the same. But let's get out of here. Let's go down with our new ship, the Paper Crane. It's a little bit bigger, I think. Maybe maybe it's about the same size. I am kind of used to uh, sailing around in a big old chonker of a ship, but this is an adequate size. No, we are traveling near shore here, so we can keep those lights off. Oh, and we should send our Z-Bat out. Did you get a forward gun? No, we've uh, we've sat on that for now. We aren't planning on doing too much hunt, uh, hunting, and our uh, our current weapon is quite sufficient for the enemies that we're coming into contact to, uh, or rather with, for now. Another Megalops defeated. We'll go and dissect it for more knowledge. That'll give us another secret, which is lovely. And we've discovered Mutton Island and Quaker's Haven, which are not barred from us uh, this time. But suppose we will see what they have to say to us. Uh, I've also realized that we now have a crew capacity of 15, so we are treading on the very edges of being able to travel at full speed. I probably should have grabbed some more Zailers for it. Oh well. Mutton Island fires on the hillside. We've reached... Quaker's Haven. Once the simple fishing village was part of the London suburbs before London fell and the waters rushed in. Smoke spirals from cottage chimneys. A lonely hill rises behind the town. So, there is a wandering parson, but we don't have a submarine yet, so we won't be able to take advantage of him. Uh, or his storyline, not advantage of him as a person. Uh, we could go for drinks, the cock and magpie. A little bit of echo. Probably reduce a bit of terror. We could wander along the shore. Oh, we could pick up a Wretched Mog for uh, three supplies. That's not too bad. That'll be, I believe, a mascot here. Yeah, it says so. Chat to the fishermen. Visit the hilltop above town. Buy supplies or fuel. Yeah, not too bad. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's pitch up, pick up that Wretched Mog. Always good to gather officers. Don't take up food or anything, so it's a good time. Plus, you know, it's a cat, I think. Is a mog a cat? Pretty sure. Meow, meow. A yellow-eyed, mangy, piebald thing winds around your ankles like a manacle chain. You've never seen a cat's mouth open that wide, perhaps. Uh, presumably, it's hungry. What's that smell? It leaps down from your arms and disappears into the darkness of the ship. An hour later, five brutally executed rats are found on the foredeck. Ah, he's doing his job as a exterminator. And we have the Wretched Mog, and I do believe he brings iron, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a bit of iron. Uh, I think mirrors and pages right now are probably more important, so we'll leave him to uh, play with that ferret. Hopefully in a nice way. Uh, we'll go chat to the fishermen. I do believe that's how we get the port report. They sail the Z around the island. They mend their nets by the harbor. They see all that happens here, but you'll need coin to open their mouths. Only one, though. Little ships and little secrets. Pirates plying the waves. Smugglers at their work. Conate ships putting into resupply. Nothing dramatic, but enough to interest the Admiralty. We've lost a little bit of echo, but gotten a port report. And uh, still, uh, something awaits us to use. Could go to the cock and magpie. That actually does not take away our something awaits us. We haven't really visited it all that often. Uh, since we have not had access to Quaker's Haven after a certain point, so... You know what? Let's let's grab drinks there. We've got the Echo to spare. 
drinks the, the cock and magpie. There's only one public house on the island. The cock and magpie is famed for its local cider and, of course, the Z-food. Cider and cave dory. The trees of the Neath are scraggly and wretched, but scrape, uh, scraping a living with parasynthesis. Not quite sure what that one is. But the apples of Mutton Island are tart and powerful, perfect for Zyder. Zyder? Cider. The stuff is stronger than it looks. You stretch yourself out in your seat, stare through the leaded window at your safely moored ship, and find yourself whistling. The landlord gives you a friendly grin and goes back to whittling, uh, wedding, rather, his cleaver. A little bit of terror for 20 Echo. Not a great trade, but uh, we haven't spent that much time in there, so we might as well. And uh, last but not least, we will visit the hilltop above town to use, that, uh, use up that something awaits us. There's not much wind on the Unterzee, but Mutton Island suffers eerie gusts and buffets from an inexplicably local fragment of weather, and the air on the hilltop ca uh, sometimes carries interesting scents. Toasting the wind, you stand on a clifftop looking over the little village. Smoke from the chimney of the cock and magpie drifts straight upwards. As you watch, the smoke tilts. The sudden wind thins it to a pencil smudge, then nothing. The wind screams unexpectedly like a god cut in half. What a noise. It must be the caves around the island channeling the air. At least that's uh, that's the most comforting explanation. Below you, the locals each take nips from a shared flask and make a toast toward the mainland. The wind is a southerly. Gained a little bit of terror for that and some fragments. But it was a page's success. Um, we know, this will be a little bit of spoiler uh, for this captain, since we haven't seen it yet, but we know from the previous captains, this island tends to partake in, uh, in a little bit of people jerky, we'll say. Smoke from the chimney. I, I don't know. That must be the unspoken god, because uh, there is a god tied to people jerky, we'll say. Uh, there's a god tied to that, but he's not spoken of. It's a very interesting event. We do believe we stopped this town from falling quite so far last time just by accidentally helping the Grand Geode. But since I don't plan on taking that path, I'm interested to see what happens here. Presumably it'll just get blockaded like it was last time. Uh, we did not... Save is probably a broad term. We did not interfere with it. We will see, though. We will see. That is for a different time. And uh, that is all of that done. We have no shop, obviously. Mutton Island. We're finished with ya. We'll head down to... Well, nothing at this point. Hopefully we'll find something down here, and I kind of know that we will. So... Down this a ways. Little ships throwing the waters here. The crew grows wistful. They swap... Oh, uh, old stories of sunlit sea. We draw near to the Cumaean Canal the way to the surface. That's right. Down here. Is there a unique name for the gates? The Albertine Gates. And the Cumaean Canal themselves. And uh, since we're close enough, we'll turn off that light here. Ah, a jelly shroom. Off in the distance. Uh, we've discovered Giannotti Harbor, which we will dock at. Uh, will we have a something awaits us by the time we get here? It seems not. Well, the Cumaean Canal staging area, the canal ascends through locks and gates, and shadow turns to the sunlight of the surface. We could travel to the surface, not with our ship right now, but, uh, well, I think if we ran just ourselves to the surface, we could. But we will uh, instead gather information for a port report here. Many ships pass this way, but perhaps you'll pick up something they missed. Let's go grab that port report. Business as usual. The gates open and shut. The locks remain free from sabotage. If anywhere besides London is safe in all the Untrazi, it is here. The surface nations have an interest in keeping the way open. We've got the perfunctory port report from the Cumaean Canal, and that'll be all we need here. We don't need to buy fuel or supplies at these prices. So we'll just set on out. There's a jelly fleur out there. Uh, that'll take two shots with our weapon, so not the most opportunistic option. I'm actually noticing something that I haven't noticed before. We typically don't stray this far west. This must be part of the locks, right? That must be where you had to go to the surface. 
Interesting. But we will head down the coast here towards some mystery and wild. What are these? Violins, I think? There's Adam's Doom, a whirlpool. And here, the Iron Republic. And if something awaits us just in time. Along with Kugel's Bluff. Let's just hook it around here and dock in the wild area that is the Iron Republic. Oh, and I uh, suppose we should keep this on so we can discover Van Horn Harbor. What was a good time? The Iron Republic, of course, is the best place to get fuel uh, by far. Well, one of the best places, I suppose. Later, in later times, there are better places, or uh, equivalent places, rather. But for now, we are here. The Hell's Client State. Be wary, their laws are not the laws of man or nature. Factory engines roar like false lions. Bloods thunders into the dock pipes. Crimson lightning skitters across the deck, leaps to the rail, curls there like a cat. The city is reflected in the glassy, calm harbor water. The citizens there have the heads of dogs and serpents. Hell has brought freedom to the Iron Republic, freedom from all laws, even those of nature. Ah, and we have the opportunity to recruit an officer, the irrepressible cannoneer. Captain, are you looking for a gunner? I'm more for a ship. Here are my references. Here are some more references. Here, uh, here's my design for a whistling shell. Here's my colleague. He'll stay on shore. Here's my hand. Will you take it? And he will substantially increase iron. Uh, for only 20 echo, I'd love to have him. Welcome aboard. Oh, this is interesting. Room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. Wait, let me take notes. Paper. And we have the irrepressible cannoneer. Sorry, gunnery. Uh, Longshanks gunnery. Or Longshanks gunner. There we go. It's a gunnery officer. We will probably be replacing you, but of course we will keep you aboard. We'll go throw him on. Uh, I suppose we should talk to the, each of them. Uh, though our supplies are... a bit low, and I do believe... Yeah, talking to them does both require supplies here. And uh, torpedo components in the case of the irrepressible cannoneer. It's a shame I'm not finding new ones. I would hope I was hoping that we would find more new officers. Perhaps there's not all that many. Still, those are for later dates. Uh, ever brought a, brought a Blemigan here? I think we brought one here once, and that was a real uh, trip. That was, that was a trip for sure, because we dropped off the Blemigan, and uh, two more copies of themselves came aboard the ship. Confusingly. The Iron Republic is a place of vast confusion. Uh, confusion. But we are here, so we will go compile a port report. It won't be entirely straightforward. The streets won't lie straight, and the ink freezes whenever you look away from the ink well, which makes that a little bit hard. But we have found some new passions. Sensations of the Republic are overwhelming. This is a desire for years. That is a hatred for fountains. Here is an emotion that could only be expressed mathematically. Now you are awash with a nostalgia for the hatching of the egg. Write it down. Write it all down. Perhaps you'll be rid of it. Gained a tale of terror. Gained a memory of distant shores. And we know that it is the Parliament of Flies. But we do have to, of course, open that up just to see what they've got. The Market of Hungers, with its spires and sigils, is it a parody of the bazaar? Today, flies fill its arcades. Buzz, buzz. The Merc folds. Gained a bit of terror and a fragment, and access to the House of Pleasures. Hold on a minute. Have we ever written this down before? I don't ever know if we, I don't actually know if we've ever come to the House of Pleasures here. Let's take a quick look through the undersea economy. We've got pages and pages of this stuff. It is not exceptionally well documented. Element of flies. Ah, I see. That's why. Uh, it's because we have that down as the Parliament of Flies, not the House of Pleasures. But it is good to know that we are here. We will go correct that option with a little bit of erasure. 
So we'll write down the houses' names, not the parliaments. House of Desiels. So, could sell some romantic literature if we had some. It is very illicit, though, so we do not. Same with Centilic, we just don't have it. A Judgment's Egg apparently trades for a Colossal Flu Corp, which we do not have, and I doubt we will get uh, anytime soon. Fuel, of course, that is the one thing that is identical across all Fallen London, or uh, all Iron Republic houses. Uh, and a Dread Surmise for nine Searing Enigmas, not half bad. Could get a bunch of Pails of Parabola in it. Um, that could be an option here. We could bring it back up to Fallen London. They are quite expensive. We would only make three, three Echoes of Profit off of them. I believe they sell for 60 from that one that we sold earlier. You know what? Sure, sure. Let's, uh, let's pick up, say, 15, 20? Say... Fifteen. Fifteen should be all right. Uh, and we will come back by here later. We will head further afield. We'll head further down here. But we will eventually return to Fallen London. Where we will make, hopefully, profit off of this. Oh, and I probably should have topped off fuel before I set out from there. Cool that I am. Oh, well. We will go hug the coast so that we can... Document its madness. I'm still not sure what's with all the papers flying around there. That's never quite made sense to me. But we will hug the edges of the world here because we do know of one thing that's down here that we will not take too close a look at. I'm just flashing that light just in case there are any... Uh, any of those. Corkery Bay, apparently. Any particular locations of interest. But we are down the south of the map here. There's a... What is that? A Dreadnought? A Frigate. Glorious Frigate who we do not want to tangle with. Not in the slightest, so we will keep hugging the coast here. So we can get around him. Oh. Runeshmi Port in Hodgerton's Bluff. That... I'm so fascinated why that port is not actually a port. We should know. There's a little bit of fog here, so unfortunately our lights, no matter what, will be useless. Grand Geode is right up here. And there is a another frigate, I believe, just down south of us, so we'll have to keep that in mind. We will travel along the coast in this fog bank. Oh no, that's actually a dreadnought. Okay. Now that we're out of the fog, we'll turn on our lights and we will reach Zelo's town. Not half shabby. Not too bad here. Along with the Grand Geode. A distant song like a mirage. A naval base with the Royal Navy's emblems curiously amended. Efficient, bright-eyed women and men work briskly everywhere you look. They are singing hymns with unfamiliar words Hard-faced Royal Marines watch you carefully, barring entry to the Geodes' heart. A plaque by the docks has been defaced with orange paint, but you can still make out the original inscription. Station 5, adjunct. Let's go grab a port report here. Does the Admiralty know? Or want to know? Take discreet notes. The Marines are watching. And uh, let's go use our something awaits us up. Ask to speak with someone in authority. What is this place? The Commodore may be able to give you a few minutes. The Commodore shakes your hand warmly. He's a handsome, open-faced fellow in an immaculate navy uniform. His office is equally handsome. It overlooks the glittering interior crystal cliff. It must be as well lit as, uh, as any study in the Neath. He deflects questions about the purpose of this installation. Classified, you know. But smilingly offers you tea, biscuits, and mineralogical anecdotes. The biscuits are good, but the anecdotes rather blend one into the next. You find yourself nodding, then jerk suddenly awake. The Commodore is smiling. Your cup is empty. You feel well, very well. A little euphoric, even. Come back soon, he says softly. 
Lost a little bit of terror, gained a memory of distant shores. And we have a Sunstroke memoir. Along with a menace, a new menace, yearning, burning. Ah, and a first officer whom we do not have filled yet. And whose quest we actually did not finish with our previous captain. So, I suppose we can go engage with her. A dark spectacled woman marches up to you in some haste. Captain, take me with you. I am no longer welcome here, and I will show you where we need to go. Increases mirrors and pages. Sure, welcome aboard. Though don't necessarily expect me to abide by your wishes, especially since they are a bit cryptic. Here I am. A ship, I suppose, is both always here and never there, because there becomes here. All right. We'll go throw her aboard, get her benefits. She gives a little bit of mirrors, a little bit of pages. Not a bad option. And uh, that'll be all for this. We won't purchase an element of Dawn here. We do know that it's something eldritch, just from our previous experience. That is the... Uh... Actually, we have no idea what that is. The whole the whole uh, Dawn machine thing is kind of obscure. I still don't understand what exactly is going on. It has something to do with sunlight, as far as far as we know. That's uh, that's the extent of it. But we know the Dawn machine is down here. I guess we just caught the edge of it. But we have eight fuel and a long way to go back to Fallen London. So let's go do that. Wasn't the element of Dawn the thing you used to colonize? No, that was uh, that was Dawn's law. That is a separate entity entirely. Um, and unfortunately, the element of Dawn is actually something that, while expensive, can actually be used for other purposes. Ah, there is Castle Clare there. Too many things named Dawn? I agree. Uh, that that does kind of be the, seem to be their shtick, though. About dusk? I like evenings. I like evenings, too. I think evenings get a bad rap. Uh, oh, and a fog bank, which means our lights are going to be quite useless to us. We'll uh, head east past this frigate here. There's a frigate just to our northwest. Um, we will turn on our lights. Hopefully the fact that he's in the fog and we are not will keep us covered. Yeah, we're all right. And it looks... Ah, there's a ship. Ah, it looks like the Utter Shroom is here. Not too bad, along with a massive crab down to the south here, just around there. The other shroom is nice and close, uh, meaning that should we play our cards right, might not be a bad option to uh, to get some five specimens to trade, depending on how things stir up here. But we have discovered the Utter Shroom, the queenly core of this spore-haunted sea. Climb the fungal fiber ladders to its summit. Shaggy, suspicious villagers scratch a living here, amidst endless clouds of spores and scurrying mobs of plant-animal hybrids. None of them ever leave. Monsters, one explains darkly. Z full of monsters. Well, that sounds like superstition, says I. Uh, actually, no, that sounds, that sounds a lot like truth now that I think about it. The Sunless Sea is quite full of monsters. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of don't blame them for not wanting to set any modicum of a foot, even, even the edge of a foot into it. But we're here now, so uh, what to do first? Search the shroom, uh, shroom tops. Might as well. Fibrous huts, spore fogs, and endless damp purple smell. Is there anything else? Buried treasure. You pick idly at a scar on the mushroom rind, and the whole thing peels away. Beneath, in an uh, and in an odd little pocket lie bundles of ancient moldy cloth, Stygian ivory like the ch stuff the Chelinit sell, and something very like a Chelinit harpoon. Did the proud Chelinites come here once? Ah, that's what they're called. Chelinites, not Chelonians. Are they the ancestors of these sorry villagers? Hmm. That's actually a interesting question. But we get five Stygian ivory, one outlandish artifact, and... An extraordinary implication for our trouble, which isn't too bad. But what else so shall we do here? We can go gather some intelligence. What happens here on top of a mushroom the size of the Marlboro? Marlboro? A slow survey. 
The villagers live a shabby but sufficient life. The utter shroom provides. They are secretive, taciturn, and curious. Ships rarely visit. Good to know. And uh, we can encourage our Blemigan Gallivanter to explore. Might feel a kinship with this place. It's certainly very mushroomy. But, unaccustomed silence. Your ever-present Blemigan is for once nowhere to be seen. The engine room is quiet. Your maps are exactly as you left them. Not one is defaced or crumpled into a ball. Finally, you spot the tip of a tendril poking out from under a pile of unwashed clothing. Your Blemigan indicates that under no circumstance whatsoever will it be emerging. What could be so bad about the other shroom? Did the other mushrooms bully it? Poor guy. Still not sure what he wants, and I'm not sure if he wants anything. Um, perhaps he's just here. We can, of course, at least speak to him. Apparently he's in the engine room here. It has made its home on a shelf in your cabin. It has built a nest from loose journal pages, the engineer's scarf, and possibly a filtered map. Uh, but it would use up a something awaits us, apparently, to go and do that. So we won't chase him off yet. Let's uh, visit the village instead. Hospitable? Not exactly, but they usually don't chase you off with sticks, and they usually let you sit beside their mildew-smelling fire. A day of stories. The central contradiction of the shroomer existence. They hate the utter shroom, but they do anything to avoid leaving. Monsters. Today, they're telling the story of how they came here. It features a shipwreck, a rain of orange jewels, the mother's blessing. There's a great deal about adversity and survival and wistful hints about their homeland somewhere to the west. Hold on, hold on. Somewhere to the west? There's almost nothing west of here. Um, they are, they are right on the edge of land. Okay, interesting. Rain of orange jewels. I can't possibly think of what fits that description. Maybe something from the Dawn Machine? I'm not sure. Mother's Blessing, I'm pretty sure that is actually referring to the Utter Shroom. I'm pretty sure that's how they refer to that. But either way, we've gained a memory of distant shores for our trouble. And uh, if we were to have honey here, we would be able to trade it for an Utter Shroom. Or uh, rather, trade it for a Blemigan from the Utter Shroom. But uh, unfortunately, we don't, so we have no more business left here. Uh, let's go back to Fallen London. Send out a Z-Bat. Oh, and a Conate Trimeran out here? Okay, yes, I, I do know that the Utter Shroom is here. Uh, the Wreck of the Miko is also over here. Yep. Yes, yes, we know that already. Oh, hang on, have we not... Have we not discovered this location? We've docked in it. How have we possibly missed it? Um, there we go. Okay. Somehow we came entirely on land and uh, still somehow missed it. Uh, lights, you can't discover stuff without your lights on. That might be it. Uh, that might be it. I am a bit concerned about fuel. We are on the way back to Fallen London, but it is still quite the distance. Demue Island is somewhere, oh god, uh, some distance to the north, and we've discovered the Phosgene Bleaks for our trouble. Ah, and the Iron and Misery Co. Funging Station? Where be that? Because that is where we need to go. There it is. Sweet. And that should mean... We have a contact to go talk to for the Admiralty here. Debut Island, a fervid forest of fungus. The Iron and Misery Co. Uh, company funging station. I&M has a funger operation here, felling giant bulgous shrooms for building materials, harvesting curily for its medicinal properties. It's a desperate little outpost of something like civilization. Up puffs the affable factor. Oh, hello, Captain. Thank God for visitors. We'd go quite mad out here otherwise. <laughs> quite mad. How could we be of assistance? Um. Oh. And a bandaged hunger is apparently watching the Clatterier. Uh, we'll get back to that, I think. Let's give the pass sign to the affable factor here. The Admiralty has asked you to bring back strategic information. This is your contact. Yes, it is. A strained smile. Yes, yes, I have it here. The courier ship to Mount Palmerston stopped off to resupply. Tell the Admiralty. Tell them I miss my children. Tell them I can't take it here much longer spores the dark oh the uh okay 
This I don't recall from the affable factor. Apparently he's uh, here not by choice. I've gotten the strategic information at the very least. Um, hmm. Let's go grab a port report. The Admiralty likes to keep an eye on Iron and Misery's activities. Business of spores. Of course, INM's activities here don't seem that interesting. Nevertheless, record what you can. We have our port report from here. Uh, and let's go uh, check what the bandaged funger is doing here. One of the funging workers is watching your crew and watching the clattery air especially. What does he want? Whispered confidences. The tomb colonist draws a little way away from the clattery air. Don't tell her you met me, he says in a hoarse rasp. Her mother cut my voice. Hope to fix it so I wouldn't be able to look for my daughter though I wouldn't want to. He wheezes. Didn't work. Operations never completely effective. Need to know my daughter's well happy. Finding enough patients, getting enough to eat and so forth. In exchange for the simplest news, he explains himself. I'm her father, he says. Ordinary engineer. Not the sort of parent she would want. We are now familiar with the clattery heir's father. We haven't actually gone into her quest yet because of our lack of supplies here. But we'll sit on that knowledge for now um since we do know when exactly we should use it perhaps we'll talk with her first but as for us uh do we explore to mew island do we have tea with a factor it'll give us some supplies if we do um oh and that'll tell us about the bandaged poissonier as well yeah, let's do that. The poor fellow needs a company and he can spare an hour away from his schedule. An interlude. You sit on the veranda of the factor's house looking over the fungal jungle. An expanse of green and sour gold. The air is thick with hovering spores. The scones are stale. Even the tea has a hint of mildew. But the factor is good company. He shares odd stories about the ice and roses of Irem, the monstrosities of the Sea of the Lilies, and a little restaurant in Venderbite where he enjoyed the most extraordinary seafood. Venderbite, I know. I never met a sea colonist who could cook, but you must visit the place. You know it. He also has a load of bulgus frond carted aboard your ship. He waves away your thanks. I've eaten so, uh, eaten so much of the stuff, I fear I might be transformed entirely into fungus. He leans confidentially toward you. It happens, you know. But one does have to eat rather a lot of it first. Plus a little bit of terror. Always nice. Uh, gains of fragments. Gained some supplies. And we know of an exceptionally fine restaurant in Venderbite. Sweet. Okay, but we know where Demu Island is. Let's uh, keep going, then. We've got four fuel to make it back to Fallen London. That is just about a straight shot from where we are. Unfortunately, it is through some fog. Fortunately, that does mean that lights on or off we will not actually affect uh, our uh, fear gain here. We'll just have to be lucky. Fortunately, there does seem to be a... Uh-oh. There's something there. A ship, perhaps? What are you? Ah, an angler crab. Yeah, no, we are not going to tangle with him just yet. We could, probably safely even. No, but he's coming after us. Not to any extent that we would be in danger. Okay. We are all right. And we'll go flip those lights on. Just in time to see, what are you? An island here, the Sisterhood. Whoa, what? What are you? Ah, Abbey Rock, okay. Wow, that's that's a lot closer. Um, Abbey Rock was really far out, uh, kind of in the middle of the sea, so Abbey Rock is real close in this playthrough. Let's go dock up, see what they have for us. And, uh, can we see that lighthouse from out here? Yes, we can. Wester, Wester Grin's fire. Not half bad. Let's go speak to the Grim Sisters in Abbey Rock here. The Grim Sisters' lair. Abbey Rock, a black spit of an island far from anywhere anyone will want to go. And that's how the Sisterhood likes it. Here stands their fortress convent. There are bear traps that look friendlier than this. We could trade supplies at it, the exact price that we get for uh, supplies of Fallen London, which is good, or it would be good if we were further away from farm, uh, from Fallen London. We'll go grab a port report, might as well. It's unlikely to be eventful, but it is present. As always, nothing is happening. The sisters watch over us. We feel their eyes. The sea crashes on the rocks, withdraws. The fortress stands stolid, 
as the last year of a century. The greatest peril you risk here is a certain purpleness of prose. And uh, we could give them our recent news. And I think, in fact, we shall. Perhaps they'll find it valuable. Let's knock at the iron-studded gates with news. Brief attention. The muscular prioress, the abbess's lieutenant, comes to the door to listen. She nods, makes notes. She pay, uh, pays particular attention to news of a marsh beast, marsh beast predations and the traffic of the rooftops. In return, she offers a rather uh, perfunctory blessing, but the blessing reassures your crew. We'll lose a little bit of terror, and we will lose our recent news. And uh, let's use our something awaits us to watch the convent. Wait a while and see. Dangerous training. Like huge and deadly herons, the sisters stalk along the very tops of the walls. You watch through a spyglass. They leap and whirl, slashing at each other with a variety of frightening weapons. God, one of them just turned a salt. Uh, just turned a somersault. Yep, they are combat nuns, that's for sure. We gained a little bit of fragment for that. And, uh, as always, they have nothing to offer us further. Uh, let's go back to Fall London, then. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, we are going to have to travel with our lights off. We have no fuel to speak of. That will increase our terror... Consider, uh, considerably, unfortunately, but that is unfortunate. We really should have stocked up in the Iron Republic. That was our mistake. Bad Stevener's Abyss. Not too bad. Luckily, there is a fair bit of light out here. Uh, we are right by Fallen Mudden, after all. And we have made it back. Remember, in worst case, that you can burn supplies. We don't have a ton of those either is the issue, though. Uh, but we should be able to make it back here just on our last barrel of fuel. Yeah, and an offer of assistance has come, but we don't need to take it. An inspection by the Ministry of Public Decency. Some things are too illegal for the Customs Service to admit the existence of. The Ministry are here looking for those. We have nothing to hide. You shrug, invite them to search your ship as thoroughly as they would like. Wow, we are suspect. But we have lost a little bit of suspicion here. They leave scuff marks on the newly scrubbed decks and take great pleasure in tangling the rigging. They find nothing more dangerous than moldy ship's biscuit. But we've lost a little bit of suspicion. Now we are returning to London. We'll go collect our messages from the Harbor Master. All the clatter and song of the dockside it soothes the soul. Are there messages for you? Not too much. Ah, a little proposal. Good evening, Captain. What a marvelous evening it is, if you don't mind my saying so, and given my uh, given it is my impression, you are an obliging sort. I imagine you will not mind at all. And since you are so very obliging, perhaps you wouldn't mind making a little detour via Mount Palmerston with a few articles of cargo if you happen to be in the area. The cheery man will, of course, cover your expenses for this trifling inconvenience. You will need at least one unit of space in your hold? Sure. Well, we could accept the commission, um, but we could actually ask if there's another task you could perform instead, and that, I think, is the more interesting of the options. I see you are hesitant. Perhaps you could find Mount Palmerston, uh, perhaps, rather, you find Mount Palmerston unbearable, and who could blame you? Well, if you have the vinegar, there is another matter which you might be able to assist me with. Yes, I think you would be very suitable to this task, very suitable indeed. We've agreed to hear the bruiser out again. An assignment his lordship's malady. My employer is a gentleman of considerable vitality and also humor. However, and as much as it pains me to say, he is not the man he was. Years ago, an ingrate of no current importance poisoned him with castigaster, uh, cantigaster, rather, venom, and he hasn't been right since. He can't walk most days. I have made what may yet transpire to be a rash promise to restore him, and I am hereby soliciting your assistance. Sure, let's give it a try. Uh, except, can you restore someone's youth and vigor? You can try, at the very least. A wayward rogue. Sometime we sent an emissary to the Fathom King's hold. He was to ascertain whether his complexity was aware of a treatment that would restore my employer to his, what I am not embarrassed to call, glory. Regrettably, the emissary has yet to return. Would you mind tracking him down and ascertaining what the, uh, exactly what the bloody problem is? Cheery man's assignment. 
So we have another quest here. To go to Fathom King's Hold. And we will see what's up over there. See if we can get a cure. Um, so did you die or retire? Uh, remember, worst case, you could burst supplies. Uh, I retired with a colony in Aceville. Correct. Uh, neat which version. Uh, we ended up siding with Fallen London, I believe. Uh, so we ended up uh, siding with them. We got the... Actually, I can't quite remember what we got from that. Uh, I think we got Folk of Knives or something like that. The uh, the iron benefits for this captain. Which, uh, conveniently, he's got our iron over 100. Uh, only hours in, which is fantastic. But we have got an assignment to go to Fathom King's Hold to find a cure for the cheery man. Ah, and the merchant venturer has made his desires known. An urchin tugs your sleeve. Governor wants a word. A brooding figure waits at the lamp light's edge. Let's speak to the merchant venturer. I have need of a reliable agent. Failing that, an inventive one. Here are my requirements. An opportunity for profit. He has very specific needs, but he won't uh, but he'll pay you much better than market rates, and he won't ask how you came by these things. So, what pray tell do uh, does he need here? Something romantic and approved, or something romantic and smuggled, uh, which is seven romantic literature. That's a that's a tough sell. This dude has more story, by the way. Oh, okay. So we we've just never gotten that before. Uh, interesting. But we will have to get romantic literature from somewhere. The uh, Khanate is the best known location. Let's see. So. Wants romantic literature. Or 21 bolts of spider silk. Neither of those are really easy to get. Those are pretty far away. And uh, with our current hold space, they would be quite difficult to obtain. Still, we'll keep that in mind. Um, we happen to stumble upon 21 bolts of spider silk randomly. Uh, we are here again. We should actually sell some of this stuff. So we have the Stygian Ivory, which we did get for free, I do believe, from the Utter Shroom, I think it was. We'll go and sell that since we don't currently need that for anything. And we have all those bales of Parabola linen that we uh, picked up. So that'll make us a little bit of profit. Uh, only a tad, only a smidge, but it's enough. Ah, and time to take a visit to Clathermont's Tattoo Parlor. You're a real zailer now, after all. Yes, we are. You go to one of those tobacco and prey places by the docks, but the prices at Clathermont's are reasonable, and his daughters are real artists. So what sign will you choose? What sign should we choose? We can choose the Dauntless Hand to commemorate your daring. Uh... If we had a Z story, we can choose the Wheel of Mists to commemorate your Zaylor's skills. The Unflinching Eye to uh, increase mirrors. Splendor to recall brighter days, increase hearts. Or Gambit. Ah. Requires a move in the great game. Honestly, I am very interested to see if the Gambit goes somewhere further. We will probably wait until we have a move in the great game, see if we can take this to uh, to anywhere. I kind of doubt that it is. I think these are all just uh, stat upgrades. That said, pages are very difficult to increase. Uh, as far as I can tell, I, all of our previous officers have never been able to increase them via uh, secrets. So this is probably still a better option here. We'll leave that for later uh, when we have a move in the great game. Um, 
then to the Dark Spectacled Admiral. We'll uh, hold on to that strategic information for now. Uh, we'll go submit our port reports, though. Abbey Rock, we categorize it as a military insta uh, installation, you know, although that has occasioned quite some quite vigorous debate. Having watched the nuns fight each other on the, uh, the cliff sides of the castle, I firmly agree with whoever considers it a military installation. Gain some favors, gain a bit of echo, and some fuel. Cumane Canal, well, if you've been there, I suppose we may as well hear about it. The fee is nominal, though. Just five echo and not even a bit of fuel for that, unfortunately. The Utter Shroom, you've spent uh, time in my Myceligaea? My my Myceligaea? Something like that. Dear me, I am most terribly sorry. 50 Echo, wow. Wow, that was quite a bit. Uh, and that is super close by, and that is, that is not a bad option at all. Uh, along with some Admiralty's favor and a bit of fuel. And the Iron Republic. Excuse me, I need to unlock this and this. Oops, and this. Could you place your port rep uh, report inside? Yes, I imagine someone will read it eventually. There's always someone. Wait, this is blank. Yes, both sides. No, no, I assure you, no. I know, these things happen in the Republic. Consider this an ex gratia payment to cover your costs. Ten echo, a little bit of terror reduced, which is one of the better things that can happen there. Uh, and a bit of fuel for that. And the Grand Geode. The Grand, yes, of course, we're quite generally well informed on that topic. But since you're here, perhaps you may as well let us know what your own impressions were. I'm thinking that they are not, in fact, well informed. I think that is a sect of the Admiralty who is... Quite suspicious. That is a cult of their own. But of course, we already have confirmation of that. Report submitted. The Admiralty official takes notes scrupulously, but with an expression of mild terror, like a novice vivisector wincing with a scalpel. The rest of the office studiously busy themselves with other tasks. Gain 10 echo, one fuel, and a bit of Admiralty's favor. Then... For Quaker's Haven. We've been trying the original rubbery lumps, have we? That we have. Not too much from that. Five echo, a bit of fuel, and an Admiralty's favor. And last but not least, Demu Island. You've been to Demu's Gates. Yes, we have. 20 echo, uh, a favor, and some fuel for that. No other information. Now, where else would you like me to go? Ask if there's anything in particular you need. Well, if we can be assured of your discretion. Where, pray tell, do you need us to go? The Cumaean Canal, apparently. Okay. Well, we have our next location to grab some strategic information. And uh, that'll just be the same. We'll return to the docks here. The Rose Market won't have changed. Uh, but we will have a new recruit who awaits, uh, awaits for intent, uh, attentions. There we go. Uh, the sigil-ridden navigator. Hmm. Yes, I suppose we should take them aboard. I'm sad that we, uh, I'm sad that we don't have new officers here. Can we cycle through them? I wonder. Yeah, only eight crew is a good reminder. Maybe we will uh, pass on the Sigil Ridden Navigator, uh, see if he cycles through to somebody we haven't seen yet, since we have seen his storyline play all the way through. Uh, let's engage a normal Zaylor. What desperate desire has led this one to sign on? Who cares? They're very keen. Consequently, they're cheap. We'll go pick up a bit of crew for a nice cheap price here. New face. They come, they go. May this one live a, lo a little longer than most. Lost a little bit of terror for our trouble. We do have a few things for the scholar, but I think since we are quite rare on most of them, maybe we'll submit a memory of distant shores. We have got a few. A piquant piece of picaresque, picaresque pilgrimage. Wells of emotion. As the alarming scholar listens, tears well in the depths of those shining, or is it blazing, eyes. They overflow, splashing onto the desk blotter. Stop, he or she sobs at last. This is too, too beautiful. Allow me to bring the macaw of memories I wish 
wish each individual tone recalled. Gain 10 echo for that, so not super great, but we are increasing Antiquarian uh, just a little bit. That'll be all we do for her. Uh, what shall we do next? I suppose we could hire on crew, put our ship in dry dock. No, oh, no, our ship is actually full up. Uh, right, because we traded in our mildly broken ship previously. Hmm. We'll close that down just so we have an accurate count. Hold on. We have ah, we have six fuel. I don't know why that isn't showing up. Six fuel isn't enough to go places, so we will need to go pick up more here. Uh, as well as actually a flare, just in case things go sideways. A flare actually keeps us possibly in the chance of uh, having ourselves rescued. I do believe it is. Where do we want to travel to next? We know we need to go down to the Cumaean Canal. There are blank spots on the map here, but I don't think any of them are big enough to house an entire island, an entire port, which is what I would think it would be. We could go further along the south. We could head down past the Grand Geode. Uh, if we wanted to maybe investigate the Dawn Machine, but I greatly do not want to go there. Uh, I think that would be a very poor solution. I think we'll head this ways. Uh, see if there's anything along the coast there. Uh, it may move. It is off of the uh, area next to Fallen London. But, the, but Port Carnelian was previously down here. Uh, and we can fill up in the Iron Republic for fuel and stuff. So let's pick up just enough to get down there. I think... 10 fuel. Well, no, I think 6 fuel should actually do to get to the Iron Republic. Uh, and probably 9 crew members. Oh, it's, it's going to be difficult to uh, estimate supply consumption. I, I had it really in hand with our previous ship and uh, crew because we had used it for quite, a, quite some time. Um, let's say 9? Uh to get it all the way down there, because we probably won't be able to buy any in the Iron Republic. Six fuel should be enough to get us to the Iron Republic, though, I want to say. Let's plan for that. And uh, in the Iron Republic, right, it is a cycling bit of uh, market there, so nothing for sure will make a profit off of there. Since we are planning on going all the way down to Port Carnelian, though... Oh, and uh, you know what? Firkins of Prisoner's Honey. Uh, we can go get Blemigans off of the Utter Shroom, which is down there as well, right? That is, yeah, over uh, across from uh, the Iron Republic, and we'll head south from there. So let's actually get some Perkins of Prisoner's Honey. We'll get, say, five? Maybe four. Four, which will convert into supplies and... Lemigans that we can go drop off in locations. So that'll be a time. Or do we do more? Nah. Nah, that'll probably be fine. Let's, uh... Go sit out with that in mind. Should keep track of our terror. It is 15, which is very reasonable. We'll go and head on down to the Iron Republic. Keeping to shore as to save fuel costs. We will stop off at the Cumaean Canal for even more strategic information. Uh, and once we get that, we should be able to convert that into something a bit more uh, interesting. That'll be the last of hugging the shore for us. I suppose we could, since it seems like we actually haven't gone down here yet. Whoa, what is that? What is that over here? What the heck? 
That looks like a building of significant interest. There's there's so much that isn't interactive or interactable uh, in the Sunless Sea that just there he is. Uh, it's just like background information, and there's so much that I wish we could interact with. I would love I would love like a uh, fully fledged game where you could you know get out and explore everything. I know that's a that would be a little bit much, but. My goodness, would that be interesting. But we have at least cleaned, uh, cleaned that curve next to the Cumane Canal out. We found that very interesting building there, whatever it is, whatever it end up, uh, ends up being, which probably won't be much. It'll probably be just a little bit of flavor text, but my goodness. Or uh, fla flavor, I guess it's not really text, flavor <laughs> visuals? But we'll make it to the Cumain Canal here. We'll go grab the port report again. And uh, fulfill your Admiralty commission. Row out and meet the contact at the foot of the Albertine Gates. The password is The Empire Remembers. In the shadow of the gates, a deeply tanned vagabond waits in a jolly boat. His clothes are ragged and his face is filthy, but his voice and manners are educated. His message is a string of numbers and the names of seven towns in Essex, Shropshire, Cumbria. He insists that you repeat it back to him three times. He will not allow you to commit it to paper. We've gotten that from him. And uh, since we're here, we might as well listen to surface gossip. The ships of the surface linger here. This is their lifeline to a warmer place. Unlucky, we only got a vision of, uh, vision of the surface here. We got some daylight. This would be a prime spot for a pub or wine shop, but the interests of the Echo Bazaar and the laws of London prevent it. They don't like competition. Still, there are temporary half-legal hostelries in long-moored ships. Here you trade stories with sun-tanned surface sailors, stories of Paris and Batavia, the Lost Fires, and the Final Isles. Not too bad. Not the worst thing in the world. Uh, I think with three, we should be able to get to the Iron Republic if we go as straight a path as we can. Hopefully we should get there. And we can always throw off our lights if we need to. Our supplies, too, are doing pretty well. We can always burn those if needed. There's Adam's Doom, which means we are not far from the Iron Republic at, uh, at all anymore. We'll save a little bit of fuel by turning our lights off as we come through that. Uh, that is a unfinished something. Not a powerful ship. Uh, powerful ship. Ah! Okay, almost, almost hit that buoy, but we're fine. And uh, we are at the Iron Republic, which means we can stock up on fuel for cheap. Uh, we can also grab the port report. Oh, which unfortunately took some supplies for us, or uh, some, some hearts for us. Gained a tale of terror and a memory of distant shores. I wonder if that's just a random chance thing. Um... No clue. But we will at least get the port report, that tale of terror and memory of distant shores, and open up the Parliament of Hunger. Uh, Parliament of Flies, that is. Or uh, is that the Cavalry Doctrine? No, nope, still the House of Pleasures. I'm really not sure how that works. Because I do believe it was a different bit of flavor text there. Maybe it's... Something different? Not sure. Well, all we'll grab here is fuel. And, uh... Honestly, we might as well grab enough to make it to and from Port Carnelian. So this is the cheapest place we are going to get pretty much anywhere. Oh, 
Let's go set straight across to... The other shroom, uh, which yeah is just about straight across. Uh, ooh, are those... Is that ship going to come for us? No, he's going to turn around. We will make it to my Selagaya and the Utter Shroom unmolested, which is great. We are not going to be attacked by anything, which means we will get here in time to gather some more intelligence for that port report and uh, trade honey here. Honey, a shroomer explains, everyone wants honey. Life on the Utter Shroom is unfairing and occasionally deadly poisonous. The Shroomers are desperate for the diversion that uh, prisoners' honey can bring, but vague about what they could pay in return. Supplies, though, at least, so we'll get more supplies here. I guess we didn't need to get quite so many. Lemigans. The Shroomers pile up slabs of sweet mauve shroom flesh. Uh, shroom flesh. There we go. It's nourishing, though it does taste rather like a muddy horse. They also generously throw in a Blemigan, a whistling, eyeless, mobile, fungus-like thing. Problems. Throw it in the sea. No room. Throw it in the sea. She shrugs. It probably swims. If not, plenty of room in the sea. So they are uh, kind of lackadaisical here on that. But we'll go grab as many of those as we can trade for. And uh, in fact, we actually have something in our hold that we should be able to work with here. Strategic information. My, the Admiralty will certainly want to know this, but... Instead, I would like to do something else here. I would like to assemble vital intelligence by putting the pieces together. Time to put these pieces together. Uh, fortunately for us, we don't have that much, uh, but we do have the mirrors required to do it out of things other than moves in the great game, which is good. Make sense of a memory of distant shores, that telling detail. Let's use this to throw together some vital intelligence. Of course, that's why, that's where. Now you know who. You have some vital intelligence. We lost our strategic information and we uh, and a memory's distant shores for that vital intelligence that we have gained here. And uh, that, I think, will be all at the Utter Shroom. I suppose we can visit the village. Yeah, we'll get that memory of distant shores right back uh, from a day of stories. Not too bad. We'll go and head south here now, though. Go and head down to Port Carnelian, as it were. And the crew, not bad. We've got plenty of supplies thanks to those lovely trades. And out here we will need to throw on our light. And dust storms are present. Oh, but we have identified two vortexes. Maybe just one. Nope, nope, we got both of them. Uh, Rainer's vortex and Velton's vortex, along with a behemoth stash, if I was not mistaken. Yep, they're over to our east. And there's Rolius's bluff, or uh, Rolius bluff, rather. And. As expected, Port Carnelian. Lovely. Fallen London's sole imperial possession. Treasure it. Now, in Port Carnelian, we uh, apparently could assist if we had a submarine, a specialized collector. We don't yet, though. Um, let's go stick a Blemigan ashore. I don't think we've actually done that before. The heat of the colony thrills the Blemigan. It sits quivering by the port rail. Familiarity breeds confidence. It trips over its own tendrils in eagerness to advance. It heads straight for the governor's house, or perhaps the jungle behind it. Not your problem, either way. And so we've lost a Blemigan, freeing up some cargo space, and we have one propagation of Blemigans abroad. Uh, 
We will go uh, grab a port report. We actually have three options, either the governor to get the port report from the perspective of the Admiralty and uh, Fallen London, the Tigers, which are the natives here, uh, to get their perspective, or call into a room above a bookshop to go talk to the Conate. Diplomats of the Conate were expelled from Port Carnelian following, following the Galatea incident. Only one remains behind, not in any official capacity, you understand. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind hearing from him. Off the record. No, I'm retired now, he tells you cheerfully. His crockery is white as the moon and rimmed with gold. Over tea, he comments sympathetically on the governor's difficulties. I feel for the man, I really do. And asks probing questions regarding your own travels. You manage to squeeze in a few of your own? Oh, the Khan is very fond of sapphires. Blue is his favorite color. We have a port report and we know that the Khan is uh, fond of sapphires. We can bring those over there if we need to, but there are better options there. Now, if we did have access to a diplomatic agent, which we don't yet, we could insinuate one here, uh, and they are pretty useful. But for now, not quite our speed. Uh, we do have access to the shops, and fuel is a little bit more expensive than in Fallen London, uh, but supplies are a little cheaper, so ultimately if you get an even amount, they balance out. Uh, and this is one of the locations we can just outright buy solace fruit. That said, there are not as many uses for solace fruit as I thought. Or perhaps I, uh, I ran past them. But they want romantic literature and casks of mushroom wine. We could have brought that instead of the firkins of prisoner's honey. Uh, but I think I'd rather have the cargo space for fuel and supplies. Uh, as well as buying sacks of dark drop coffee beans for i believe the cheapest price in the sunless sea matched only by adam's way uh, and a casket of sapphires for the only price that you can uh, pay in the sunless sea forum this is the only place you can get them i'm fairly sure and a mountain shirt for uh for benefit we won't get anything here though we're pretty well supplied and fed let's go check out the old sapphire processing plant it sits on an inlet at the port's edge here, the fierce philanthropist runs an illicit but profitable business converting ships into submarines. After all, philanthropy doesn't come cheap. Have your ship converted for submarine travel, the philanthrop uh, philanthropist greets you warmly with sherry. Your money's no good here. I owe your predecessor a great debt. Dang straight you do. Uh, our father was the man who helped them research exactly how submarines were made, uh, how all of the components fit together, and we uh, sailed across quite a bit of sea to learn how to do it. So I guess we get that for free. Fantastic. A few days work, more sherry, and the adjustments are complete. Your new, uh, your vessel's new pipework gleams. Beneath the water, you can make out the graceful curve of her retracted shell hull. We can now transform. That is actually wrong. I changed that key because we <laughs> transformed quite a few accidental times, uh, one of which really bugged me. We now have the ability to transform into submarine, and this is actually a new ship. We've never seen, obviously, the ship transform, so I wonder if the animation is going to be that different. Whoops, and uh, right, we don't need to learn anything about that, but that will give us access to all of these submarine quests that we can possibly get, which means we can assist a specialized collector here. A dapper gentleman lounges by a shoot of flowers, admir uh, admiring butterflies with a predatory gleam in his eyes. Would you help him find the quarry of a lifetime? Nothing to ask. A man of pins in the jar. With a satisfied nod toward your ship, the incomparable Aurelian slips the butterfly into a killing jar. He explains as the vibrant orange wings beat against the glass. You've been beneath the, we uh, the waves, I see. And I trust that you've seen tyrant moths as well. Fine creatures, but nothing compared to the regal, regal kin, the most moth. I know where to find it, and with your ship, we can see it hatch. He gazes down at the butterflies, now still. Take me down to the undercrow, and I'll show you something worth preserving forever. Ah, okay, it's this fellow again. But he wants to go to the undercrow. That is the incomparable Aurelian. Alrighty, well, we'll have to go find it again, but I suppose we'll have to find lots of things again. Uh, 
what should we do here with our something awaits us? We could pan for sapphires. We've got a pretty decent chance, an 80% chance. Or we could uh, visit Murgatroyd's Imperial Tea Shop behind the window. Spoons clink on China. Uh, Terra at 22, I think we're okay. Let's, uh, let's pan for sapphires here in the fungal jungle. Somewhere in its heart runs a river of shining stones. Maybe we'll get some. A glimmer of truth. Braving the jungle's violet spore drifts, you find a narrow stream. You kneel among the red-capped agarics that spot its banks. It doesn't heave with sapphires as the story's promised, but, with, uh, but an afternoon's panning yields a pocket full of glittering shards. Not too bad. 33 echo for our trouble. And I think that's all we need to do here. Uh, does Fall in London actually buy any of these for an increased price? We aren't going to make tons of profit off of this. Uh, it is a little too close Fall in London for that to be viable, I would think. They buy caskets of sapphires at 90, so we could go for that option. Sacks of dark drop coffee beans. They buy for 44. Uh, so there's actually a better... Yeah, that is actually a better trade per unit. Uh, 38 to 44 is 6, and then 86 to 90 is obviously only 4. So if we were going to run something, it would probably be those sacks of dark drop coffee beans. And uh, Mountain Shirt, obviously, we can buy it, but that is not a not a great trade. And uh, its usage is also not so great. So let's pick up some of these, shall we? Uh, I guess we will only be able to pick up nine. That'll still be fine. Uh, in fact, let's leave three spaces. Um, just in case, just in case we happen upon something at the Sunless Sea, uh, maybe we'll encounter a ship or something. But I think that'll be that. Don't need fuel, don't need anything else. We don't have much left to do here, we know, uh, though we can now go underwater. I'm interested to see what stuff pans out there. We'll head kind of slowly, we'll probably take a far edge here. Head slowly back up to fall in London. And uh, we'll hug the far side of Belton's vortex here, if I can see the bloody thing. It is kind of blinding, this dust storm. We'll start sending out Z-Bats since we are in the unknown. No islands, okay. Confusingly, the Z-Bat is actually also able to find underwater ports, which is nice, uh, but kind of doesn't make sense. Huh, still a whole lot of nothing. Ooh, but a Trimaran. Hopefully he doesn't turn back towards us here. Still nothing, really. Wow, this is an empty section of ocean. We'll keep sending the Z-Bat out, though, just in case he happens upon something. Maybe we'll get lucky. Perhaps we're not far enough out. Uh, this is a pretty decent zoom, though. I was, I was thinking that it might be that we are actually too zoomed in here. We'll go and check out probably, what is it, a giant crab? Yep, eastern angler crab. I think, ooh, maybe we get away here. Yeah, we're all right. Something forgotten is here. Oh, oh, is there? Uh-oh. Burning blue, a hiss of horror from the lookout. The glim lamp at the front of the ship is sputtering and arcing, fizzing with blue light. Even as you watch, the blue fades, but it's not a good omen. Uh, I guess we can attempt to calm them. It's a very natural explanation. 72% chance, not too bad. Ah, but a failure. Listen a moment, 
Your measured and rational speech does you no good. Your crew, no bad luck when they see it. Gained a little bit of terror. We are now at 28. Unfortunate. No. Still no ports, though. Really. I guess we are kind of close to Demuse Island for there to be a new uh, island or a uh, port. Should we travel further afield? I don't know. Ah, Bonnie Reef's some distance to the north. Where's that? Okay. That's a location. I don't actually think that's a dock, but it's good to know. Yeah, here we go. Uh, this looks quite a bit like the principles, does it not? And we'll just patrol out here. Could return to fall in London now. I think we may not. Whoa. Oh, this is new. A tooth cracking treasure. A chunk of grit baked in your ship's biscuit. You crack the uh crack a tooth and curse. Your crew chuckle, but when they uh when the object turns out to be a diamond, small and badly flawed, but a diamond nevertheless, they all hush. Diamonds are sacred to stone, one says. Give it to the Z, Captain, it'll be luck for us. Um Ooh. Okay, uh, I'm going to be a little superstitious. We are a uh, an aspiring poet here, so I think we have a little bit of romance in our blood. Let's uh, let's do the careful thing. It is a diamond, but it is also something that we know can appease gods here. Do the careful thing. Zaylers pray to stone when they want home, hearth, and healing. She's the kind of god you want on your side. Let's go toss that overboard. A flash in the darkness. The diamond glints once as it reaches the apex of its arc. Down, down, and a wave reaches up to take it. You know something of the three gods of the Z. We now have Stone's attention. And we lost some terror for our trouble. Which isn't too bad. Maybe not the best option, but it is an option that we took nonetheless. Uh, discover Depot A. as ah, is Station 3. Ah, Okay. Hello, Station 3. Uh, we don't have too much for you. Station 3, we may infer a Station 1 and a Station 2. We may conjecture a Station 4. But we have Station 3. Machinery hums behind high steel walls. Up the hill, there are visible outlines of warehouses and a building with a spire. But the lamps are low where they burn at all, and your ship is the only one in a harbor. Uh, well, I suppose we may as well get a telescope on shore. Train your telescope on shore. Might be the best way to get a look. Uh, might be best to get a look from a distance. Church or something else? You stand on the high point of your ship and look to the shore. There's a steepled building on the horizon. By far the largest thing in sight. No cross marks the top of it, nor any other symbol you recognize. Okay. Well, that's the port report. Um... Yeah, cool, and we will uh, throw a Blemigan ashore. Might as well. What will it do in this place of oil and metal? A creeping plague. The Blemigan sidles furtively into a pipe that protrudes from the wall. All is still. You see no more of it. As you turn to go, grief greasy smoke puffs suddenly from the pipe's end. You smell burning grease. Nevertheless, perhaps it survived. Uh, oops. That probably didn't go so great. Uh... Still, though, we delivered it. Uh, that is some propagation there. May as well try the gate. The only way past the gate, uh, past the walls is an unimposing but sturdy-looking gate of triple-barred silvery metal, uh, metal. A sign beside it reads deliveries. No way in. The metal is steel-hard and icy cold to the touch. Attempts with chisels and crowbars fail. Perhaps if you could bring the ship's guns to bear... But no. If you return with a certain delivery, the gate will be open. You'll know if you find it. That'll be a long box. But uh, let's use our something awaits us to search for signs of other visitors. Nonetheless, it never hurts to know what you're up against. 
If the propagation went up, then the Blemigan survived, right? You're not wrong, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, in locations where the Blemigan has most assuredly died, the uh, propagation doesn't actually go up, so... Probably survived, then. A familiar smell. There is nothing to see along the narrow quays, but there is a smell distinct enough to rise above the odors of brine and wood and wet rope. It is the smell of frankincense burned recently in insubstantial qualities. Uh, quantities, rather. So we gained a little bit of fragment from that. Not too bad. But we know where Station 3 is, uh, and we know how to get in. Do we continue north from here? How much fuel do we have? 11 and 9. Hmm. I suppose we can just continue north and then pull a, f a hard left when we get to the approximate level of Fallen London. That's what we can do. Ooh, and there's a nice big island over here. Is that anything of interest? A couple big islands, actually. The world is webbed with invisible lines. You've crossed one. Tighten them, and it would split like a fruit. Some Z-bats out here. Nothing of interest, though. I wonder what all these islands are. No, these have got these have gotta be something, right? Apparently not. Some sort of ship's uh, some sort of beetle has invaded your morsel of ship's biscuit. It waggles its antennae impertinently. How dare ye? Yeah, I guess these are just a bunch of deserted islands here. Uh not too much of interest, and it is time to start heading back to Fallen London, so... I suppose we'll take a northbound route, kind of curve around, but we are ultimately heading back. Hmm. No islands either. Ah, Shepherd's Wash. Uh-oh. We've been sighted by something. A Corsair or something more... sinister? Ah, just a uh, pirate's steam pinnace. That we can take on. Come, have at you. Ow. Have at you slightly softer. Oh! And of course, our uh, ship's light is burning blue again. Right in the middle of firing a uh, one of our cannons. Well, we'll go attempt to calm them again. Hey, and it actually worked this time. Light meets dark. The darkness in the neath is more than the absence of light. It's the physical presence which distorts the shape of the world. Your light melts the darkness, restores sanity to the world. You explain something of this to your Zaylers. It's not the first time they've heard of it. But they seem slightly less nervous. We got a fragment for our trouble, and we sunk the ship immediately after. So let's go loot and scuttle her. She's a vile old vessel, and these Zs aren't safe. Take what you can and move on. We will go pick out a crate of supplies. Okay, not too bad. Hardtack and water and an unexpected box of nails. A would-be wit remarks that the nails look tastier than the hardtack until an officer's glare silences her. Fire, now sit down, children, and let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, ship explodes in the background, yeah. Basi basically what's happened. I've, ha I've definitely had that happen in the middle of a boss fight. Uh... I think like two or three times the crew was just like oh no we're scared and then I was like we are in the middle of combat how how can you possibly have the brain power here uh, whenever I see the beetle in the ship's biscuit thing I always think about the time that it showed up when you were starving to death and you were like why is there a biscuit here and you guys are considering eating each other hey sh uh, be beetles protein extra protein right there there is uh, no reason they shouldn't go and consume that thing well possibly apart from the fact that you could you know get poisoned by it. But other than that, uh, we are at the Shepherd's Isles now, though. Sheep, lichen, and standing stones. Of course, the bearded watchman tells you there are no actual shepherds on the Shepherd Isles. Sheep are mostly illegal here. No, indeed, it's just the name of the gentleman that found the islands. Greybeard, sitting in the village square, nods solemnly. No sheep, one of them says. 
plenty of tales. Ask us anything. So, uh, let's go grab the port report. Oh, yes, yes, my, yes. There's been goings on. In the bleak light of the false stars, surface roiling like a porridge pot. Up with a roar of steam and flash of fire. Three widows swim in tentacles, and then we saw his highness. There's rather a lot of this material. Getting Barbosa Marius vibes. I'm a little busy at the moment. Yeah, that that is just about right. But we'll go grab that port report from there. God, I love those movies. Those the first three movies, the first three films, solid, absolutely solid movies. Um, oh, okay. This is something new here. The rest of the Z, rest of the Z, the beard, uh, bearded watchman scoffs. Here's where you need to be, but we don't talk about the rest of the Z. But a sniveling caitiff draws you aside. I've got something for you, he promises. But I'll need some of that good stuff from London. A lot of that good stuff. Ooh. Oh, and, um, what? How has the sigil ridden navigator gotten here? He was, he was in fallen London. <laughs> did he, did he like swim across? We are, we are a ways out of here. Like this is a good barrel or two's travel by ship. That dude is really, he really wants to get on board. Um, we'll put a Blemigan ashore, I suppose. She's going to be following you. I, I would like a different navigator. We've already seen his story through to the end. We know what happens there. Um, that aside, let's go put a Blemigan ashore. Dark and quiet, it should survive. A mushroom tail. These, the bearded watchman explains. We used to have these long ago. They raised the standing stones, you know, with poetry. Wow, must have been some poet. Uh, one Z story for our trouble, though. Not too bad. And, uh, shall we hear a story? Could have a picnic. Eh, probably not. Which story shall we hear? Uh... You know what? They were already talking about it. Let's hear the tales of the Standing Stones. The bearded vi villagers are happy to talk about the local sites. Well, sight. True as I stand here, there were sisters from the sisterhood over on Abbey Rock. Came here renegade, hunting a renegade who served the god called Stone. Ran her to ground here, and she called on the god, and the stone struck them all to pillars of rock. Stand close and quiet, and you'll hear them weeping. Oh, that was, that was not the tale I was expecting. That was a little darker. Gained a tale of terror for our trouble and a bit of terror in and of itself. Who could have predicted he's good at navigating? <laughs> yeah, I guess he is a, uh, a navigator here. Uh, I mean, we don't have one. Oh, wait. Hold on a minute. Uh, no, he's a first officer. We do have one. Increases mirrors and veils. Increases mirrors and pages. Urgh, I don't know. We'll leave him. If he follows us again, if, we, if, we, if he pops up again pick him up but i would really prefer some newer stories here um and i think in terms of fuel and supplies and whatnot we should be good let's go to fall london yeah oh for the love of ah <sighs> we'll go do this again i swear to god somebody's putting like blue paint on the lens of our ship's light Third time in a row. But we succeeded, so we gained a fragment and uh, no terror, which is lovely. Ah, and there is a Jilly Fleur here. Shall we take him on? I suppose we may as well. Hopefully, we should charge up here before he gets a chance to attack. Perfect. Jilly Fleurs and the Jilly Fleur. Is it a young jellyfish? A lesser subspecies? Do the dreams of jellyfish become real? In any case, it's now a sad slick of goo dissolving into the Z. Scoop it up. Perhaps you can eat it. Better yet, perhaps your Zaylers can. Yeah, we'll go take that. Um... Or we could let it disperse, somehow tied to visage. Hmm. 
We've got supplies. Sure, let's let it disperse. Watch its oil rainbow colors fade. A face. From above, the Jilly Fleur's cap does look a little like a woman's face. She dissolves like smeared paint. Oh my god, I can see it. Look at that. Like the eye, the nose, and like a mouth. Kind of distorted. Wow, that's unsettling. What what good art? I've never noticed that before. Maybe is that is that a unique picture maybe? I have no idea. If it's not, that's still a, that's a super neat detail. But we will make our way slowly back to Fallen London here. Discovered Rowena's rocks? Really? We never discovered this? We passed right by it. I guess we had our lights off. That'll show us. Says the man turning his lights off. It saves fuel. What can I say? A light ship far from home. Really not that far from home. It's clear, bright beams warm the way. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we could put a Blemic in a ship. It's unlikely to flourish, but you'll have done your duty? Sure. Oil and light, the Blemigan scampers off into the innards of the ship, warm but steely, quiet but brightly lit. Surely it'll live a lonely, unfruitful life. Nah, it'll have a good time. It'll go and make friends with all the sailors. It'll become a lovely little mascot here. Another little Blemigan galvanter. We will go scooch ourselves home with a decent amount of fuel, not a terrible amount. And we've got quite a few port reports as well, which will be good for us. We will go dock up in Fallen London. Another inspection? Ah. Some things are too illegal for the customs service to admit the existence of. The Ministry are here looking for those. Nothing to hide. You shrug and invite them to search your ship as thoroughly as they would like. And of course, they will not find anything, but they will tangle the rigging, scuff the deck, and steal our moldy ship's biscuits. More people wanting to sign on? Uh, let's see, that'll be here. Presbyterian Adventurous. Okay, so it does cycle through. Okay, that's good to know. Um, could get another gunnery officer. Unfortunately, we have already seen the Presbyterian Adventurous' story through. So, we shall not partake. We'll keep cycling through until we get a new officer here. I was looking through and I'm not sure if there are any new officers you can get. Oh, you're kidding! We've seen them all? Aw, oh, man. That's disappointing. The rest of the officers look like they're locked behind specific backgrounds. God, that sucks. Okay, well, I guess in that case we will pick up the Presbyterian Adventurous. Afternoon, Captain. Looking for a gunnery officer? I'd like to help you blow up some monsters if you'll have me. Yeah, sure. The Adventurous is a gunnery officer who increases iron and veils. Welcome aboard. Oh, hello, Captain. Is this one of yours? I had to knock her about a bit. She didn't like taking orders from foreigners. Still, we're good friends now. The Adventurous claps the black-eyed sailor on the back. Oddly enough, they do seem to be friends now. Cool. We have her uh, at a very expensive price. Because uh, we did not need any more Zailers. We are good with what we've got. Uh, let's go to the Admiral. And uh, submit our port reports. We'll lead him on a little bit. And what is the day-to-day -day like on those farther shores? Well, there's the Shepherd Isles. But uh, boy, do they have some interesting tales. Submit is unsubstantiated hearsay. We do hear some unlikely tales of that place. Friendly scoffing, I agree, it does seem implausible. So many of the stories from that place do. Still, there's a little gold of truth in the mud of rumor from time to time. Your payment, Captain. Ten Echo, Admiralty's favor, and a bit of fuel. Station 3, excuse me, just let me call a colleague in. Omitted. This is my colleague, Mr. Villain, of the Ministry of Public Decency. Mr. Villain, this good captain's report is here. You would care to? Yes, the fire's already lit. Let us... There we go. Now only ashes remain, and it might have caused... Such a lot of trouble. Thank you, Captain. We appreciate your discretion. Here's your payment. You need not trouble yourself further in this affair. Secret location, Station 3. We do not want to bring that back, and we won't be able to bring that back anymore. Any more port reports there. But that also gave us a hundred echo as a little payoff, a nice little bribe for us, along with some Admiralty's favor and a bit of fuel. 
we'll go submit that humane can now report is really just perfunctory at this point since they know so well uh along with that one from my Celgia, that one's actually a pretty decent price uh 50 echo a repeatable one not half bad the iron republic ooh boomf i no i didn't expect that to happen well perhaps it's for the best some reports should not be reported no no don't concern yourself this was my third best suit and the admiralty offers a modest allowance for document related damage perhaps it's best if you leave now though good day gained a little bit of terror some fragments and some fuel but unfortunately it caught flame uh the port report which is not great. We do have more to submit, though. Specifically, from Port Carnelian. You know, I sometimes wonder whether that place was a good idea. I didn't say that. But we'll get 30 Echo and a little bit of fuel from it, along with some favors. Now, anything in particular you need? Well, if we can be assured of your discretion. Let's go submit that vital intelligence. What's that? Tell me quickly. Enthusiastic nods. I'm glad you brought this to me. I have a colleague of sorts, a diplomat so-called. I will tell you because I trust you. This diplomat will pay better, but I will put the information to better use. He leans forward. There are powers in this world I cannot speak of. There are affairs of the Navy I am not proud of. Bring me the more information like this, and we can set matters right. We have now Recovering Supremacy London. 350 Echo, which is a great price, uh, and a loss of that vital intelligence, but we will gain some favor from it. And uh, see where he's going to send us next. Well, we are going to the Chelinit. Okay, that is a long ways away. Uh, on the far east. I guess that is our easy strategic information completed. Um, Let's go ask what he thinks of the voracious diplomat, though I do think he knows. The diplomat, a half-legendary, all-infamous figure whose connection to the Admiralty is obscure. A frank scowl. An unprincipled scoundrel, the Admiral snaps. If you have intelligence, bring it to me. Don't go off the books. Well, let's go talk with him. The diplomat lairs near Mansion's pyre in a second-floor office above a gymnasium for pugilistic ladies and gentlemen. The conversation is punctu uh, punctuated by distant shouts and blows. The diplomat smiles fondly at the sounds. Well. So that's a... Uh, that's a fight club, then, right? If we're reading between the lines here. Gymnasium for pugilistic ladies and gentlemen. It's either a fight club or a, uh, a boxing arena. But, now that we have access to the voracious diplomat, we can go pick up an agent. I have a friend, the diplomat says casually, who would be grateful for passage somewhere else. The Conate, for instance, or Port Carnelian. An agent will allow you to establish an intelligence network and sometimes grow it later. Sure, let's go pick one up. A name and an address. Both are probably temporary, but they're all, they are all you need. So we'll go pick that up. And uh, let's go ask about her role here. What kind of diplomacy is involved? A catly grin. The kind of diplomacy that doesn't get written down. I'm attached to the Admiralty, not the Foreign Office. London is not what she was, but she has uh, still has interests abroad. I look after them as best I can. I do hope you're patriotic enough to not ask for too many details. Indeed. And uh, what do you think of the dark-spectacled Admiral here? Do you work closely together? A carefully neutral expression. Well, now. The Admiral is a man of principle, very straightforward, very traditional in his views. I think it's rather courteous of him to expect the Navy, uh, courageous rather, of him to expect the Navy to operate without outside assistance. And he has excellent taste in both chamber music and wine. I hope that makes my feelings clear. I keep trying to read more into her response, because obviously this is a, uh, a diplomat's response, obviously, as she is a diplomat. Um... Obviously, she thinks he is straightforward and traditional. Pretty obvious. She also thinks he's courageous. I think this line is suggesting that she has slept with him. Um, chamber music and wine. That's very much a seductive uh, combination there. So... I guess why, we know why she removed him when we uh, put her into prominence and power in our last playthrough. Not going to go that route this time. Uh, definitely not. 
but that is our business with the Admiralty. Merchant Venturer, we still have nothing for. He is going to take quite some time. In fact, a lot of our long-term options here are going to take some time. Because uh, we have to go to the Conate for him. The Conate or Savior's Rocks, and I am not intent on visiting Savior's Rocks, especially since it'll take up 21 cargo space, and in our current ship, that is a lot to invest. Our new location for... The, uh, not Vital Intelligence, the, ah, shoot, I can't quite remember the name. Whatever it is, uh, is in the Chelinit, which is also on the Far East, so that is a distant trip. And most of the other locations we need to visit are Strategic Info, that's the one, yes. Uh, most of the other locations are yet undiscovered, so we have no idea how close or far they may be. We're going to have to go identify those. Uh, I suppose we can visit on the Alarming Scholar. We have memories of Distant Shore in excess, but I think we'll hold on to them. Uh, since we are going after the Zong of the Z, let's go take a look in our lodgings here. Ah, we'll go get some recent use from the morning papers again. Lose a little bit of terror, gain some supply. Let's go to our study here. Private Sanctuary. The Zong of the Z. It requires all of these. The Whispering Trophy Case, the Monstrous Almanac, the Serene Aquarium, the Anatomical Cabinet, and a Shrine to Stone. Um, that is all required. We should write a will uh, immediately. We have the uh, Echo to do it, so that's not too big an issue. The Court of Chancery is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom it may devour. Ensure it doesn't get its lion tentacles on your property when you're gone. Base born in a fouling piece. The lawyer peers at you like a vulture composed of crocodiles. Come now, she creaks. There are a few years in you yet, but your caution does you credit. Sign here. No, no, ink is fine. This isn't the brass embassy. So we'll get that settled, at least. Um, and the Zong of the Z, that's going to require quite a bit of sailing, quite a bit of possibly grinding, too. Uh, we'll want to hold on to memories of distant shores, Z stories, and tales of terror as much as we can, because those are difficult to get. Secrets, those will just come, I think, uh, in passing. Hopefully. Port Cecil, Mount Palmerston, Conate. Con's heart, rather, specifically. Uh, King Idris Castle. And Irem. Those are all just places we will have to visit, and we will get there. Uh, the Dread Surmise is probably going to be the last thing that we get for this. Uh... So that is quite the setup there uh, that eats through a lot of Searing Enigmas. Searing Enigma, I suppose. You know you can use strategic information to make vital intelligence, right? Yes, we uh, we just did that, actually. Uh, we just did that, submitted that to the Admiralty. That's how we got access to the uh, Voracious Diplomat and her spy network, which is good. Uh, we now have access to, but this, I do believe, is our final assembly here. That's what we want. We'll go get there eventually. And honestly, uh, that will probably be the end of the stream. We are about at time. Uh, a good start from this captain. We uh, didn't trade up to our final, well, not final, but uh, our superior ship. We have gotten a fair bit of the map cleared out. Uh, wow, we actually went a lot further east than I thought we would. Uh, I was kind of thinking we would get most of this. We haven't sailed a whole lot north yet, uh, so we don't know what's by Codex and whether we don't know it's exactly here. Probably do that next time. We'll keep setting out. We'll maybe try to find uh, Fathom King's Hold and Polythreme along with the Undercrow. Those are a few locations that we have quests for. Uh, maybe we'll grab some extra supplies if we can get them uh, to talk to our officers here. We've got a few of them. Apparently, there aren't quite so many as I had thought. Uh, a bit unfortunate, but I guess we'll just do some of their quests again. A lot of them have great perks and benefits and stuff, uh, so we'll go run through them again, uh, see what we've got. But that'll all be for next time. Now, we are only doing Sun the Sea once a week, since this is our second playthrough. We'll try to get a lot done. We'll try to keep it uh, as flowing as we can get. 
But that does mean we, we will be back in the Sunless Sea next Friday, one week from today. That is when we will come back to this, Captain. That is when we will do more stuff in this. Uh, if you're not just interested in Sunless Sea content, we will be coming back on... Uh, what day is it? Friday. We will be coming back on Monday. Uh, Monday at 3 PST. We will be going into uh, Sevtech Ages, a Minecraft mod for a focus on long-term industrialization and uh, beyond. We've actually gotten to space and stuff, but we are kind of putting that behind. We are going to be doing some black magic there. Uh, or, well, maybe some white magic too. We are dealing with some starlight stuff. Uh, so feel free to drop by then. If you're not interested in either of those two, we do have a third thing coming around. We are pre uh, playing Prey, uh, the arcane action-adventure immersive sim game uh, released in 2017. That will be on Tuesdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and we've gotten a little ways into it. Uh, we've been exploring kind of the initial starting area. We have had a massive shock uh, in Revelation just in the intro. Uh, we've gotten to the hook, so I'm very keen on pushing further in that. That'll be on Tuesday, 3 PST. I hope to see you guys at one of those three times. If not, I hope you too manage to find uh, familiar faces and uh, reacquaint yourself with them. I, for the meanwhile, I'm going to call that a stream. Great stream, everybody. Cheers, y'all.